I this to break I, this down, you know. So you know, I, man, I told her like her Time Magazine flyer has been hitting. You know what I mean? Well, like a lot this. of people love the Time Magazine flyer. So she created this. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. That's why. Okay, 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 okay. That's why she was asked. I remember mean, because she liked that I approve her. I was like. Hell yeah, I'm like, shit, my face on a magazine, never been on there before. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, this shit look fresh <laughs> as hell. <laughs> yeah, man, this is this is dope, bro. We I took this picture, man, and you know where this picture came from. I mean, I mean, well, you already know, remember when you first saw it, it mm -hmm. was, you know what I'm saying? We were talking about the uh matter of fact, I got it with me too. That fucking ID card. Mm -hmm. Remember that shit that I showed you? Yep. And the little motherfucking uh Mark Wheels uh long signing bitch. Uh, yeah, so you don't you don't want to put me on to the whole uh the ID card like your shit was official official. And you know what? Hey, I know man, appreciate that. And you know the the uh the plug that I got it from, hmm. they went up, bro. I think they went up to like about uh I think I just went and checked like maybe like last year. Hmm. I think he charging like about like 30 about 40 45 bucks for the motherfuckers now. Wow. And I got it it was only it was only a saw buck, AK. You know what I'm saying? Just ten bucks. Mm -hmm. So that demand went up because you know everybody in the notary game. So hell, the price of meat has gone up, as they say on Willie Dynamite move. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Hey, uh, so so check this out, right? What's up? What's up? The notary, the notary front desk is gonna be like. Like that, that's the next level where I'm taking th this shit, right? Okay. Um, me and Bree are putting together a platform where we're going to provide uh, affordable, trained executive assistance to notary professionals, bro. Hey, sign me the fuck. Hey, when y'all get y'all first uh, uh, worthy uh, candidate, send them my way, man. So, so I that that was the, that's what we were. That's what we're putting together actively right now, right? So right. the we're literally going to train these executive assistants first before we launch them out to notary professionals. They're going right. to know the call script in and out. They're going to know how to dispatch a notary, how to find notaries, and then like basically set you up to either um, have the assignments ready for you on your calendar or have it ready for, you know, if you want to broaden your horizon and take it to the agency level yeah. side of things, yeah, it will be able to dispatch notaries left and right to you nationwide, bro. So check this out with that being said, some of you said it kind of rained out. So like for somebody like me in the position I am on, on, on the notary chess board, mm -hmm. so you know, like, you know, like sometimes like it get like, it get like real hectic for me where I'm doing on my way to a close and then I'm trying to, uh, uh, confirm orders and this, that, and third on the phone. So, will you train them to like call clients and shit? Oh yeah, on my day. behalf to confirm and then put that shit in calendar according to like what's open and according to like what's my fucking uh, 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 asking. Uh, you know, saying like an asking fee. Required Absolutely. Fee so basically, like, let because you know, like when you're in a closing, right? You really right. can't answer the phone because it's gonna look real unprofessional. Even though you we know, don't I, do it, I know I do it. Oh, you do it. <laughs> Man, I do it, bro. Cause shit, cause you know what? Cause you know why I do it? Cause just think about it. Now, in a pandemic, it's actually a perfect alibi. You know why? Cause most mm. motherfuckers that I do clothes with, they work from home. So everybody, so the pandemic has opened the the world, you know what I'm saying, the floodgates to multitasking. So it's not, it Ooh. so it don't no longer look rude because shit, motherfuckers be on the phone with me, like doing calls with they uh with their employer or employee. Or with they babysit where the fuck, and they be like, "I apologize." I'm like, no, it's all good. So you know, like when I get like a uh, a motherfucking sign and coming my way, like, "Hey, Jamar, are you available?" You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying like I don't do it right away all the time, but you know, mm -hmm. like I do, I do attend to my phone at all my meetings, bro. I ain't gonna sit up here in front because okay, it, it's shit. Like, now you're 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 rare. You're a rare breed where you actually do that. I know f there's a lot of notaries that will not take. A, a a notary uh or assignment inquiry right because right. they don't one is gonna prolong their stay in with staying with that client right right 
Two, they maybe they gave a different price and then you know certain prices for different situations. So right. they don't want the client all up in their business, you know. Oh, finding out. okay. So they so 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 from the point of view, they doing it from like the actual like phone call. The point of view I'm talking about, bro, is like I rarely get phone calls, but if I do, you know, they'd be like, hey Jamar, we gotta okay, okay, okay. Like, say for instance, like if it's like a company like Solidify, a title company I work with. They're like, hey, Jamar, what's going on? I'm like, I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm in the clothes. You know what I'm saying? I let them know right there and there. They're like, okay, cool. I'm like, hey, we got we got some available such a day, such a day. Are you available? Yep. And I already know their price point already. So you know okay. I'm cool with that. But 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 what I mean by answering the phone, bro, minus like the actual like talking to somebody in front of them, I'm talking about like all the fucking text messages that I'll be getting through and Snapchat, emails or do a title company or yeah, some shit like that. So I answer my text. So in the world that we live in now, the pandemic, fucking multitasking is at the helm. Yeah, so yeah. It ain't rude. So, like, you know, every situation is different, right? So, right. like, in your in your situation, um, you wouldn't be taking a lot of phone calls, but you want to confirm appointments, and you want to um, not on, what confirm appointments. You want to take still be able to take orders, mm -hmm. right? Respond to emails. Mm -hmm. So. Depending on what you need your your executive assistant to do, that's what we're gonna train them on. I want them to do I well, me personally, I want them to handle all the damn phone calls, shit, yeah. putting that shit in my damn Google Calendar, even though I can do it, but it's much easier, just much more efficient, and it keep mm -hmm. me more focused on the road and all that shit. Then yeah. be so all that little back end shit. If I could just have it to a point where I ain't doing nothing but just printing, sorting my paperwork. Uh, you know what I'm saying, facilitating the damn closing, dropping off at FedEx or UPS. I know, see, see that I know those are things that I can't train them on because why? Because that requires me and me on. Right. So if I can get to, you know what I'm saying, so if y'all get to that point, or even just majority, like even damn in hell, 60%, 7% at that point of the other minor bullshit out of my, uh, south my plate, that would be dope for me. Yeah, just like, okay, well, you know, like verifying that all the documents are in intact, right? Yeah. Or, or or following up with the people, make sure that they actually sent the check. Right. You're like, yeah, yeah. Woo, so that's so you, you know, plan. things like that. We're 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 training, like we're in the process of training. We have like three candidates now. Um, and then we're building up our waiting list on that. So people will be able to go to like notaryfrontdesk.com and then be added to our waiting list for us to assign a, an executive assistant for them. And that's that's a good idea, saying having to train them to make sure uh, the checks been sent. Cause you know, a lot of times, man, it gets so busy, I can't keep up if shit yeah. coming in, what's coming in, who, and, and how soon. And Indeed. real quick, a funny story, man. Um, yeah. uh, last month, when I went out to my mom's house, I saw a check. I was saying some said some like said something like. How the fuck is somebody sending me something to say? Because I don't everything I get is going to that virtual office shot I told you about last right. time. No. So just a, you know what I'm saying? So it dawned on me, some told me this is gonna be like a fucking check. And true enough, they sent the damn check out to my mom's crib. And this was like, you know what I'm saying, like, and this is a job I did back in October. And I'm just now October of last year. Yes, man. That's how busy it's been. Like I said, I, I, man, it's been, it's been like, it'd be like wow. points or like, or like, you know what I'm saying? Bouts where I don't get a chance to go holler at my mom. You know what I'm saying? So, so when I do go holler at my mom, I always got like a gang of fucking mail. And I was going through my mail, shipping through my, sorting through my mail, like, damn, check out here. And then, so I had to call in because, you know, by the past 90 days, the check yeah. was fucking voided. Yeah. So, you know, they was cool. Now they like, oh, no problem. We'll go ahead. And uh, and lucky I did call them because come to find out now, from now on, they just do nothing but direct deposits. They don't send paper checks no more. Interesting. So, you know, what's in, you know I, I just did a video on IG talking about, you know, dealing with title and escrow companies, how you have to wait on that check. And sometimes it's like, 14, 21 days, 30 days, 45 days. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Hey, if you guys need cash flow, that that can put you in a very tight space because yes. your bills are still coming through. Yes. So you still have to pay your bill, your mortgage, your your phone bill, all that stuff. So yes. while you're waiting yes. on checks, it's going to be a little bit difficult for you to be able to to fund those things when you're waiting on checks. That's like taking 30, 45 days. 
Yeah. So I, I yeah. tell people, man, you know, concentrate on that cash flow because at least the cash flow will be able to hold you over for the short pe period of time. And yes. then while you're attacking the escrow and title companies, now you got all these checks coming in. You're damn near have a check. Right. Every day. Right. Mm -hmm. And I guess that you, okay. Now when you say like uh, the cash, when you talk about like the general notary side, like, yeah, like the private, right. uh, yeah. private notarizations where you're yeah. doing the quick claim deeds, power of attorneys, all of that stuff where you don't have to wait for them to issue out a check or wait for the house to get funded or the loan to get yes. funded. You get yes. that money immediately, like within. Yes, yes, yes. Within, I'm, 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 I'm gonna start doing more and more general notary work uh, myself because you know, not just for that reason, but like two, just to like you know, just sharpen up my my notary skills. One and mm -hmm. flex them out more, as well as just continue to grow my notary. You know what I'm saying? Resume and my entrepreneur business. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Resume, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't so, hurt. so we got quite a few people on here already. So let, let let's start the show, Jamar. All right, man. I feel like the show already started. <laughs> I know. So we just go flow right into it. <laughs> peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing hit man, your humble hip hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo, and you already know what it is, man. You rocking with the best. You heard. So today I am pleased. I am so honored to have one. Of, like I've known this guy for. How long we've known each other now, bro? Um, definitely over, you know what I'm saying? Definitely uh about a year, about, almost you know two saying? years now. Uh, over a year, over a year. So this brother was the second person to actually sign up to my course. And and I'll tell you guys a funny story. Uh Jamar Ra, when he signed up, right? I just wanted to know that the information that I had was duplicatable, right? And, but I knew one thing, I was like, you know what? I can't give it out for free because people just don't appreciate free stuff, right? So I was like, all right, I'm gonna charge a nominal fee. And then if Jamar does it, I'm gonna give him everything I got, like no holes bar, just everything in my brain, I'm just gonna transfer into this brother, right? <laughs> and you were able to do some extraordinary things within that one year, bro. So that's why I'm so I'm pleased. Good. I'm so honored to have you on the show because I think your your story is so extraordinary. Where you you had the humble beginnings, now you're doing damn near what a hundred closings a month. <laughs> I'm had, not even yeah. I'm not even touching that to be honest <laughs> with you. And I got a damn agency. So, brother, tell people who you are, man, and 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 tell them where you hail from. The big the big shy shy town is in the house. Chicago's very own. Tell people who you are, brother. Oh, no doubt, no doubt, man. Appreciate the uh the, the fly intro, man. And uh, you know, um definitely first and foremost, you know, what's up to everybody out here uh tuned in in the uh, chat room and across the planet. You know what I'm saying? Definitely glad to be a part of y'all lives at this hour. Um as the brother said, my name is Jamal Rob. And um, you know, I'm just a uh just a guy from Shy City doing my thing out here in these notary streets. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Snow on the ground, leaves on the ground. I get down no matter what. Uh, as my man said, you know, real quick, you know, we've been, you know what I'm saying? Man, him been chopping up with like the past, you know what, last winter, bro, like around, um, I want to say like around like December, and you know what I'm saying? You already know who plugged us up. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and Shout since, out to brother Drake, Andre Hatchett. Shout, shout out to Drake, shout, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the godfather of all his uh, notary, notary uh, uh, knowledge and entrepreneurship shit. And I like, you know, ever since then, man, we just we just click, man, you know what I'm saying? We ain't never had no dull moment. And, you know, we just been bouncing out ideas off each other. But, you know, you definitely uh, was definitely that mentor, man, you know, outside of Andre that helped put that, uh, let's just say the entrepreneur battery in my back. And ever since then, as you know, you know, we've been shopping up and I just been getting better and better, just been executing and, uh, you know, just bumping and bruising along the way, man, and steady improving. Now you specialize, uh, just for the audience, you specialize in real estate and um, especially in the Chicago market. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll let you guys know, he is thorough, very, very thorough uh, um, to the point where I call him when it comes to like the real estate. Hey man, I don't know what these documents look like. Actually, I don't even touch them. I have my other notaries reach out and talk to Jamar and he'll guide them through 
just that's how thorough he is with everything. So tell tell people a little bit about when you first started in the notary industry. What was your approach? What like what were you expecting to do? Like was this a side hustle for you, man, or was it great. Like, you plan to make it full hustle? Full time. That's a great question, man. Now you definitely taking me back a little bit. You know, um, indeed, I can tell you that. So what was happening was um, about a little bit over two years ago, I was uh, heavy into the ride sharing streets out here in Chicago, as you very well know, uh, doing Uber and Lyft full time. And, um, and how I got involved in Uber and Lyft full time because I was working at the uh, University of Chicago Hospital for, you know what I'm saying, for a great amount, you know what I'm saying, for a couple of years, where, where actually over a decade. And um, you know what I'm saying, make a long story short with that, you know, all the time while I was there at the hospital, I was like the overtime king there, you know, the whole nine, uh, just like killing them, you know, first, second and third shift for like seven, eight years, you know what I'm saying, just like, just like straight, just like really getting the bag. And you know, after a while, slowly but surely, you know, the manager team at the time, I was working like in the uh, general stores department, you know, so I wasn't like no, no, uh, no black guy, you know, what I mean, like in a white coat, or I like, wasn't no nurse or nothing like that. I was like really at like uh, one of, like the lower level positions, one of the lower level uh, positions at the hospital. So I said I was killing, you know, what I'm saying as a uh, overtime king there, and then you know when that quickly dried up, you know, because the manager said, hey, you know, we ain't got the funds to, you know, keep uh, breaking you off and everybody else off on the overtime. So now we go, I forgot the word that they use, but it was just some BS. I'm like, all right, cool. So I got used to having that type of money coming in, you know, on a, you know, bi-weekly basis. So I'm like, well, what the hell I'm gonna do now at this point to get that? And lo and behold, around that time, uh, I had a, 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 a childhood friend who I grew up with, he was doing Uber. And I heard about Uber and I thought about it, but he was like the actually like the first dude here in Chicago that I knew that was like doing it. He was like, bro, he was like, man, I'm out here getting it. I'm like, what you mean you out here getting it? He said, I'm out here like killing it. I'm like, man, so you know, like give him like a roundabout figure, you know what I'm saying? Like how much you be waking, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like you can make over the weekend. He said easy, like about like seven, eight hundred. I'm like, what? I'm like, damn, I ain't straight up. So mm -hmm. I quickly end up signing up uh, Uber through him, you know what I'm saying, okay. through, like the, uh, through his promo code. So, you know, he got the bread. Of course, he didn't split it with me at the time. I ain't know no better. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I really wasn't hurt because, you know, I was still, you know what I'm saying, getting like that, um, that for show money every two weeks at the hospital. So, you know, it was all good. So one hand washed the other, both washed the face. So it was cool. Um, so, so what happened, you know, I started doing the, uh, the Uber thing, like, back in like in the winter time of like, I don't know, maybe like 2015, 16, something, something like that, something mm -hmm. like that. And when I first started doing it, man, I just like, I like, I like the concept of like, like, so like instant money, as we talked about before we went live, the cash flow, the money coming in. I'm like, this is cool. So I fell in love with that. Speed up the whole story. Uh, maybe like around in uh, 2017, I didn't like the direction of my department at the time the hospital was going in. I was mm. like real stressed. I was like real unhappy to be there for like a long period of time. And mm. finally, I just got up, you know what I'm saying? The enough, the enough, we just say testosterone to go ahead and move around and say, hey, you know what? Um, I got this, I got this uh, Uber and Lyft shit I can do, you know what I'm saying, full time. Uh, so, you know, I figure, uh, you know what I'm saying, everything else out. So I pretty much, man, just walked out of the full-time job. Like I said, I was well over there for 10 years, uh, you know, comfortable and, and all, the whole nine, but I knew I couldn't, I had to pull that, pull that, you know what I'm saying, pull that cover off me, so to speak. Yeah. You know, ever since then, since 2017 in uh, August, man, I've been out here, um, graduated from the ride sharing world to, the uh to the present notary uh world man so so after a while with the notary thing i mean no 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 uh backtrack after a while with the uber thing um i got tired of that you know what i'm saying i was hustling grinding doing that seven days a week getting mm -hmm. all the bonuses uh having good uh, uh rates and reviews and all that from the uh from the drivers and whatever the case may be yeah. but it wear tears on you so i'm like what what can i do to like eventually do something else, you know what I'm saying? That I, that I ain't gotta do this as much. 
So mm -hmm. I ended up finding some online that, uh, you know, I said, you know what, let me see what's online out here, whatever. And somehow I'd, uh, on YouTube, I ran to Mark Will's course and he started talking about um, the loan sign and stuff. But before that, mm -hmm. I heard about Dre years ago, but I just, I just, I was like, whatever. I didn't, I just slept on it. Mm -hmm. So my first course was with Andre under the notary act, you know, saying, give me like, you know what I'm saying? Just give me like in the mindset of like becoming a notary. Yeah. But the Mark Wills course, like how I got into the real estate mm -hmm. industry. And I remember uh, when I was doing Dre course, you know, he gave props to the loan sign world, but he also said it's a lot of work. And it definitely is. <laughs> it died on front. It definitely is a lot of work. But uh, the Mark well, speak, Wills speak on that real quick. Like, so oh, what, like, what, like, what is like, considered a lot of work? Man, okay. Um, it's a lot of uh, nuances or, you know, caveats to it, you know, like from like, um, uh, like Vince, like we were just talking about before we went live, like this phone right here, you know what I'm saying? Like this is majority how I get like all my uh, my appointments and how mainly I, I accept appointments on a day-to-day -day basis is through, let me show y'all real quick. Um, through one of the platforms, I'm pretty sure. Is, is everybody on here familiar with uh, Snapdocs? Are you guys familiar with Snapdocs? You could guys could type in your yeah. uh, everything on um, in the chat, by the way. Okay, well, okay, okay. So, 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 so I heard somebody say, Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is like some of the orders, you know, that just come in like on a regular basis, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Going back to today and tomorrow and uh, yesterday. So, so, uh, so, so just imagine um, me answering text messages while I'm literally at a sign. Mm. You know, while I'm literally at a sign and so, so I know a lot of people don't do that, but I do that. But like uh, me and uh, Tiger just got finished uh, uh, discussing before we went live. The reason why I do it, because we got to keep in mind this, since the pandemic has taken place, a lot of people are working from home. So a lot of people are parents, a lot of people are not parents. So a lot of people are like, we now live in a world where we have to multitask. Yeah. So, so, so a lot of the appointments is not like the so-called quote unquote, like perfect setting pre the pandemic, because I was like, I was starting my business before even the pandemic kicked off. So, so I got to see how the industry was before the pandemic. And then since the pandemic, it just been just like nuts in a good way. You know what I'm saying? Just super busy. So, so that's one caveat that can, uh, that I'm saying that I mean, what I mean by it. it's like a lot of nuances and, you know, like a lot of parts. Then you have to like, you know, uh, like the print, uh, like the whole printer situation. We got to like print legal size documents, letter size documents. And uh, sometimes like depending on whoever formatted the documents in letter legal size documents, mm -hmm. it may not print out. For instance, like today, uh, even though I ain't do no signs today, but I have one scheduled and mm -hmm. I got it and, and I end up canceling. I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because... It was like about 107 pages in the letter size documents. Okay. And only the first 17, bro, was only printing out. You know what I'm saying? Like I tried like multiple times. It would not, you know what I'm saying? It would not, it would not print out for nothing. And this mm -hmm. is a signing, and this is a signing service company I worked with before. Just last week I had some issues with their paperwork. So uh, I was like, man, what the hell going on with this? So I tried again, tried like about five different times. So eventually I ended up reaching out to the sign service to let them know, like, I don't know what's going on with the documents, but for whatever reason, what I try to print on through Safari or Chrome, it ain't, it ain't, you know what I'm saying? It's not coming out through my printer. I said, I said, all my other orders I've been printing out up to this point has been coming out, you know, A-OK, -okay, like how they supposed to come out in full, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I said, so, so, so with, so long story short with that, uh, I told him, I'm like, hey, why don't you guys try uh, emailing me the documents directly, you know what I'm saying? I'll see if it print out that way. Mm -hmm. So I ended up doing that, like maybe after 10 or 15 minutes, whatever, still the same thing was going on. And um, eventually I let them know, I'm like, hey, well, you know, uh, I think, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You guys might be better off trying to find like another notary could do this, they could print out the job. Because like for right now, for some reason, I don't know what's going on with the format of your documents, but it ain't, you know what I'm saying, ain't nothing happening. Now, I'm glad you said that because it's okay to turn down if, if it's not working out, right? Yes. Like, 
there's a lot of times you as you got you would know um they'll send you the documents really really late right and it's almost impossible <laughs> yeah. for you to make it to that appointment on time so sometimes you have to turn down a, a an order because what happens is when you get get to the client's house and you show up let's say an hour two hours late because they didn't send the documents to you on time now the client is mad at you yeah now you're fighting with them and they're fighting back with you and you guys are bumping heads at the yeah. you know at the table <laughs> yeah and it was never your fault in the first place never no man that definitely has happened to me uh once or twice and mm -hmm. you know what when uh when i anticipate like the documents gonna be late uh for the most part always once again grab this baby right here my yes. phone and just get to text them, like let them know, like, hey, such and such, hey, Miss Johnson, hey, um, I just want to give you a quick update. Due to the documents not being received my way, I'm gonna have to inform you. Then hopefully that you have some flexibility in your schedule, so we can push back the uh, the appointment time. You know, so I just say the appointment time was at 4 p.m. and I still haven't got the documents, and it's like three o'clock. So and then they, they, then like depending on if I got like other appointments lined up after that, which nine times out of 10, I probably will. And mm -hmm. then I just let them know, like, uh, we we'll probably have to push it back. So let me know. So, so, so then that's when I get opportunity. I, mean, I get an opportunity to let me know what time frames, not time, or sometimes I say time, but I say like what time frames will work best for you at this point. And then yes. they'll let me know. And then on a rare occasion, we don't get a chance to meet out out because, you know, they may have something yeah. Uh, Pre-planned, like one time, remember uh, the documents was late and it was like this damn couple out in uh, Old Park. I was mm -hmm. gonna do a sign for on a Friday. And it was like, maybe about, about about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, like just when the weather, whenever that damn day was, when the weather was like just starting to heat up here in Chicago. And you know, they had come to find out, uh, they were so pressed to get the appointment uh, going mm -hmm. and all that because they had like, prior dinner plans, like, you know what I'm saying? Like really like important dinner plans. And I just had, and I had to let the title company know, like, you know, they got dinner plans, whatever. So you guys yeah. might want to send that out to another notary. And like you said, you something I'm saying, this business is one, one of the most important lessons I learned, all money and good money. And you have to be willing to just be like, you know what I'm saying? Have, have, have faith in yourself and have confidence, your, and have confidence in yourself and say, you know what, it's gonna come regardless. Right. So that's, that's my mind frame, how, how, how I operate on like, just like today, it was a good paying job, I think like about like 120, 125 or something like that or whatever, and it went too far for me. But I told her, I'm like, you know, and then I know I had to be here to do this, plus some other stuff that I had to do involving my uh, notary business. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't worth the stress of me trying to like wait on them to get it together or me trying to print out uh, one page at a time and all that and then, you know, I end up losing instead of, you know what I'm saying, in the midst of me trying to just get that 125. And I so get- let me, So let's let's do this, man, because I know you, you've you been through the trenches with the loan signing stuff, like being the yes, loan sir. signing agent. So we're, let's play this quick game. We're gonna call it the good, the bad, and the ugly of <laughs> loan signing, being a loan signing agent. Because I can't speak on it because I'm not a loan signing agent, right? But right. I want shout out to tech out there in East Oakland. What up, baby? What up? What so up? So let's talk about the good. The good. What, what, what is what is great about being a loan signing agent? What what's all okay. the great stuff? I would, you know what I'm saying? And I only can speak from experience and maybe somebody in the audience, they can feel it, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully. Uh, but I was definitely say I, I put like this. I'm gonna speak from experience, and I'm gonna say just like somebody. I mean, if any and everybody out there who may have like an inkling of an interest or always wanted to know but didn't, I would yeah. say for me, man, uh, me getting up off them Uber streets at the time I did, it was perfect timing, bro. Because remember when me and you started kicking it? Like I said back last year, heavy. That's when the pandemic kicked off. Like yeah. literally like back in like March 17th and I was still out there doing Uber and it was real. I'm saying like, like the like the past three or four months, I was saying like, like the bread was there, but it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like basically like what I was able to make with Uber at one point in time, like in like five or six hours, it made it to like about eight or 10 hours. Right, so I remember like, that. Yeah, yeah, man. So, you know, like 
the Uber streets was getting crowded. And then, you know, Uber started fucking with the goddamn uh, earnings. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, you know, so, 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 so you had to work harder and longer and deal with more stress on your car and on yourself and further away from other shit that you want to do in life. So, uh, but the good, you know what I'm saying? But just to get back to what you asked about the good, the good was for me was to be off them, no, to be off those Uber streets, bro, first and foremost. You know what I'm saying? As much as, as, much as I uh, loved doing Uber at the time, mm -hmm. as much as many cool people I met along the way, because I still I still connect with a few people that I have met, but um, but the, the ride, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and no knocks to nobody that's doing a ride share, you know what I'm saying, game, but you know, here in Chicago, and I'm pretty sure in like a lot of other major cities, you know what I'm saying, we all know that Uber and Lyft, they get to the fucking with the goddamn numbers mm. any time. You know what I'm saying? With the, I'm talking about bonuses and all, bro. Because I remember at one point you had to do so many rides. I just say you had to do like about uh, maybe like about uh, I don't know, like a hundred, 160 rides for the whole week, right? From Monday okay. to Sunday, whatever. And you were probably you know what I'm saying you was you know what I'm saying you was guaranteed uh, to get probably like an extra like on top of like what you was already bringing in, like an extra like. Like like five five fifty or something like that on top of whatever what I'm saying what you already was making. Okay. So them bonuses quickly start becoming like five. You know what I'm saying? Like okay, let's just say it started at five fifty, then he start going to five, then it started going to four seventy five. Oh went to wow. Four. You know what I'm saying? Just like a generic example, guys. Not not necessarily like a specified example, but hopefully you guys catch what I'm saying for those right. who out there in them uh, ride sharing streets. So just to be not at the whims of the ride sharing world was yeah. the, the first and foremost is the good with me. Uh, two, the good is um, the flexibility of schedule. Like I said, you know, like if uh, if, this, if the uh, sign is not favorable for yeah. me, even at the last minute, I could say, hey, you know, especially, you know, if you do like relationship with that particular title company or the sign is sort of like, hey, you know, for whatever reason, you know, um, uh, this is not going to work out for me. So, you know, I always tell them, you know what I'm saying, whether through text or through a phone call, you know, please kindly reassign this to another notary and I just catch you guys on the next one. You know, because, mm -hmm. you know, they, because hell, you know, you got to be able to do that because they're counsel on you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? For whatever reason, you know, whether whether it's on the uh, the sign or the borrower themselves or whether it's on the ESCO uh, service or whatever case may be, you know, by them not having the docs, they need more time. So, so cancellations, and all that, it happens a lot. So, so, and it's like no love lost. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, it's no bad blood. So I, I like that. And you know, I definitely like the earning, the earning opportunity uh, as well, you know. Uh, and I know everybody got like different earning goals. And you know, so I know we'll probably get into that as well too. But the one I'm saying, another great good that I like about this, it gave me a chance to like uh, just communicate more. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Just like with people gave me a chance, like sharpen up my communication skills. Okay. Cause I can always do that. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? Driving, driving Uber, you know, like a lot of motherfuckers, you know, they get in your car, whatever. They got their AirPods on and all that. So it's all good. Nice, nice. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I think that's dope because if, if you're saying like it sharpened up your communication skills, that that's that's this business right here. Because yes. again, you're you're talking to loan officers, escrow companies, title companies, law firms, all of these white collar professionals, right? Yes. So being able to communicate effectively with these people is a must. It's a yes. must. So let me ask you now: What are the top three with the bad of this industry? Man, um, now we now 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 remember we still got to get the ugly. <laughs> right? Damn! Damn! See? See? You know what? <laughs> Them minds might bleed, might cross over like, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, like, like Alan uh, Iverson, you know what I'm saying? No, here, here's, the, here's the reason why I wanted to do this thing, because there is a lot of misnomers out there where they don't show you the ugly side of this business, right? Okay. There are a lot of people that are jumping into it because people like myself or Tech or you or Andre... Mm -hmm. and, and Mark Wills and, and Bill Soroka, they're making this industry look fly and fun and like, hey, we're all having a fucking celebration. We're right. all on, 
on a damn roller coaster right. eating popcorn and Slurpees and shit. We're having a great fucking time. They right. don't show you none here. of the stressful stuff. Okay. Um, so I want I want to be able to at, at least it's the way I see it is like dating a girl, right? Right. You date the girl, and the girl says, "I want to date other people as well." Well, at least you gave me that option. I appreciate that. Right. Now, if I want to keep dating you, that's on me. But right. at least you gave me the option to leave or stay. <laughs> right. Right. So, you want some ugliness or you want some bad? Oh, uh, the bad first. Three bad, and then we're going to go into three ugly. Man, let me see here. Because they, like I said, for me, it might end up just bleeding into... To... Oh, shit. Then let's... Let, let, all right, let, let's smorgasbord the joint. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Three okay. bad ugly. <laughs> well, one... Well, one, I can I can definitely uh, tell you about uh, something that we had talked about before, like uh, how a lot of these title companies is being on some slick shit. Mm. But I can say some slick shit. Yeah, what yeah. I mean by that is like, uh, say, say for instance, like you built a uh, a quality relationship, or less, or less, you think you build a quality relationship with them you know me like you did so many i always stories. say these hoes ain't loyal exactly that's why i say logan I'm saying they had you thinking that you built some quality with their ass you know just how i play go do with these chicks out here have ass thinking what it is but what ain't really ain't you know what i'm saying yes so <laughs> so uh what i would say what, what one thing come to mind with that well when, when i'm leading up to with these title companies mm -hmm. They'll say, yeah, you know, yeah, Jamal, yeah, you know, we, we, you know what I'm saying? We respect the server, we respect your game, you know what I'm saying? And they'll keep throwing you consistent work. That's all good. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm grateful, you know what I'm saying, about it. And, and I'm humble and I'm appreciative of it. And I always say, anytime I get thrown an opportunity from no, whether I get on Snap Docs, sign order from direct, or if I'm saying from another signing company or direct from a title, I always say, you know, thank you for the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I don't think they really used to people saying that. Especially mm. brothers, especially black people, but I always say, I, I'm saying, even if I got texted to him, thank you for the opportunity. Even if I emailed it, thank you for the opportunity. I'm saying, thank you for this uh, current opportunity. Um, but what what I'm noticing, what I have been noticing for a while, like a lot of these title companies, they starting to set up their own, and you know what I'm saying, and go with them. Say everybody gonna be, uh, go remain nameless. I ain't gonna put nobody on on front street just yet. Um, but these title companies, they are setting up their own signing services. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you know, because you know, like as you just said, like uh, the more uh, upper echelon of our industry, you know, like the Wills, the Sorokas, everybody else you want to throw up in that motherfucking mix, whatever the case may be. You know, that's out here selling courses, and you know, I'm a student of all of them, as you already know. Mm -hmm. you know I definitely believe in investing in myself. But as absolutely, you see, they do paint a picture, a particular picture. You know what I'm saying? They do, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they definitely pertain, I mean, I'm saying paint a particular picture that's like, like you said, it's, it's just like all that. But uh, also too, I do I do catch Mary now and then say it is hard work and it is, but these title companies, they are setting up their own signing services and they end up paying you less than what they would normally pay a qualified notary signing agent and professional such as myself. You know, cause uh case in point, I do I do one, I do matter of fact, man, this one signing service I've been working with real, real, real heavy, bro. I mean like I did like 400 closes for them wow. in less than less than a year. You know, and um and uh what ended up happening was I got damn near cool with all you know what I'm saying? Like what, what I mean cool, you know what I'm saying? We ain't go out, go drinking and all that shit. I don't mean cool like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't get down like that. You know what I'm saying? At least not in that world. But you know what I mean by cool, but you know, I got their number, they got mine. So you know, if I need like questions answered and shit like that, they available. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gotta be feeling like I gotta chase somebody. Cause you know, <laughs> you're right. That's another bad now I'm thinking of it. You know, when there's like issues that come up at closing and there's mm -hmm. nobody available to answer the fucking phone, Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying, especially with something like I'm not, uh, I'm not, um, I never experienced before, or let's just say if it's like a mere issue going on with the numbers itself on the borrower side, like, you know, what they was told that they was going to get 
uh, at cash and clothes is way off or a little bit off or, mm -hmm. uh, or what they was told that they owe was off or they taxes not escrow or they escrow, I mean, I'm saying, or their insurance is not escrow, something like that, whatever the case may be. A lot of times, you know what I'm saying, for a lot of these companies, signing service and title companies, it may be hard as hell to catch up with them, especially on the weekends. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying, so I'm not a yeah, real- Yeah, you ain't gonna get a hold of them. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a real big fan of doing closings on the weekends, because anytime I do a close on the weekend, not Sunday, because I don't work on Sundays, but when I do closes on Saturdays, it just, it just seemed like, for the most part, it, I'm saying, it has been getting better this year, the few times I have done them, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, we'll keep it out of the universe, but for the most part, especially like last year, it always been some sort of fucking like hang up or hiccup. Mm -hmm. And then you know, when I'm trying to get in contact with a signing service, or a damn uh, title company, nobody's home. So, nobody's what, so what are you doing in a situation like that then? Let, let's hey, say there is a discrepancy in the- in Hey, the, you know what I do? Hey, um, say if it's like a discrepancy, like with the numbers itself. And mm -hmm. what I do, I, I uh, put it on the borrower or the sign like, hey, well, this is what we can do. We can do it one or two ways. Cause I tell them like, hey, I'm not here to force you, suede you, twist your arm in no shape, form, try to convince you just so I can, I, 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 I told me the way it go, I'm an eat regardless. I mean, I'm saying those exact word combo depending on who I'm talking to. So, right. you know, I always keep my shit fluid like Bruce Lee say on the water side, but depending on who I'm talking to, I, I mean, but I mean, for the most part, my generic script is like, hey, we could do it one or two ways. We can, um, we can sign the documents as is, and I could send the documents out because it'd be there by the office by Monday. And when I get back to my office, I'm gonna I'm gonna notate the particular issue. So say for instance, the particular issue is the uh, cash to close is off. So you know I I, so I notate that so so uh, so they are aware that one that you try to call. I mean I mean because I say it, it may get as thick as like the borrower they trying to call somebody. You know what I'm saying, AK like the loan officer on their end and they can't get in contact with nobody because mm -hmm. it happened to me for several times before on the weekend and on the weekday, but definitely on the weekends. Like they they, they can get in contact with the loan officer and I can get in contact with the signing service or the title company. So at that point, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, like I said, hey, I like, you know, when I get back to my office, I just let it be known, you know what I'm saying, to the title company or the, sign, or the signing company, like, hey, I try to uh, reach you guys several times, but whether by uh, text message, phone call, email, and I notate all that shit, and I got wrecked just in case they try to bring the ruckus back yeah. in my way. I got, I got, I got evidence. I got, I got records. You know what I'm saying? You know, one thing about a notary, you know what I'm saying? You gonna keep records of something if you a damn notary. So, I always gonna keep records of, of a communication. So uh, that's pretty much how. how so I'm, let me ask you this: in that, in a situation like that. Typically, do you find yourself going back to that appointment to rectify the situation? Like, let's oh, just say there's, there's some, you know some of the numbers were off. If the numbers was off, uh, and most, I don't think I never had to go back. If it was a situation where, like I said, where the borrower or the signer try to reach out to somebody to no avail, and oh, well, I try to reach out to somebody to no avail. It's pretty much like at that point, you know, like once I write all my notes and once they reach out to the uh, to the loan officer, maybe on that following Monday, then maybe I think what happens probably is uh, I still I still get paid. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. First and foremost, I know people probably want to know that. But I think what ended up happening is that the loan, you know what I'm saying like the lender or the title company, they directly send like a new cash, uh, you know what I'm saying, a new closing disclosure or a new alter statement reflecting okay. the uh, correct numbers as it should have read in the beginning. So it, it'll be something that doesn't even require a signature or the notary to actually be there. Right, right. So it don't necessarily okay. require my signature or my notification. It right. just more like just me just uh me me presenting the doc. But as you already know, you know, you know what I'm saying like I tell people, you know, like I tell clients all the time and notaries, if the money ain't right, everything everything else about the appointment go be thrown off because you know you can't get past that number in your head. Not That's true. Being correct, and I and I and I respect that and I honor that. And once again, I tell them, like, hey, I'm not here to sway you either way it go. If you don't want to continue it, we don't have to continue it. And I just say, hey, the, the you know I'm saying we have to stop the loan due to the customer request not filling what's on the paperwork. Right. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you know, we, we worked on a couple of deals before where you, would you, would you, you're not a loan, uh, a technically a loan officer, but you actually had to guide the loan officer to send you the right documents, which was crazy to me. Like, hey, oh, do you I guys forgot, know that you forgot the altar? You forgot the yeah, altar yeah, uh, document yeah, or you forgot this document. Does yeah. that happen often? It can, man. Like, uh, matter of fact, this week, uh, no, no, you know what? Matter of fact, last week, uh, for this title company I work with out in Florida, they cool, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a pretty good title company, you know what I'm saying? They, they respect the notaries, you know what I'm saying? They respect the game, you know what I'm saying? And they play it fair. And um, so, you know, like, as I'm preparing my documents, what I mean by preparing my documents, um, I, um, I make the I make the signing more efficient by preparing my documents. So, you know, like, if you present the documents in the way they want you to present them, you know what I'm saying, as they come, as they are, yeah. you, have to, you know what I'm saying, you have to shift through a whole lot of stuff that you don't have to sign, that you don't have to sign or that the signer doesn't have to sign. And you know, working in a major city, as you know, you being from New York, me being from Chicago, and now you in Chicago, time is everything, bro. Everybody's on the go. Yeah. So, 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 how I was able to find um, about this one particular document not being present because I know the documents, you know, what I'm saying so well, and the damn altar statement and another, um, I think like another document, I can't think of what it was, but I know the altar statement was missing. And come and find out they realized that the numbers was off. And you know how they realized the numbers was off? Because when I, because the appointment was like maybe like a week. Okay, okay, they, no, they sent me the appointment maybe like about a week and a couple of days before the actual appointment. So say, so say mm -hmm. they sent me the appointment uh, the Friday before the, the following Friday the appointment was on, right? So, so I had called and confirmed, it was a sister matter of fact, on the South side, I remember this. And uh, I had called and confirmed the appointment with her and I was like, you know what I'm saying? You know, like I said, I said hey, this is Jamara. You know, can I speak to so-and-so? She said, speak. I said, yeah, I'm calling to introduce myself and to uh, confirm the appointment details for so-and-so date. So, you know, we did all that. And then, you know, she had uh, asked me a, uh, and not, no, no, matter of fact, you know, like a part of my phone spill, cause I know you got a phone spill. I got a phone spill too for like when I'm confirming. And I was like, uh, let me ask you this. Have you had the opportunity? This is part of my phone script, y'all. I'm mm -hmm. like, have you had the opportunity to carefully review the final numbers on your loan in detail? Mm. I said, what I mean by that is, uh, good question. You know if you owe money up front or are you anticipating uh, funds sometime after the closing or the uh, disbursement date? And she said, she hasn't got that paperwork just yet. I said, okay, cool. So, you know, we got like about a week for that to arrive. So I told her in the meantime, between time, I said, the reason why I'm asking this, uh, if you have any questions or concerns about those final numbers, reach out to your loan officer. And I told her why I said, the reason being because by me being a signing agent, I am not trained nor by state law, can I give out any interpretation of the mathematical part of what's going on? You know what I'm saying? On the right. loan, I'm like, I'm your <laughs> a man out of Oakland. No, nah, yeah, it's, it's that. But yeah, it's yeah. really like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me nothing. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, but 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 I'm saying I'll let to say this, y'all, for real. Uh, so when I told that, she's like, okay, cool. So 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 mind y'all, like I told you, that I discovered the altar statement was missing when I was, you know what I'm saying, sorting through the docs. So when I let the title company know that, hey, y'all, the uh, the altar statement is missing, is this correct? Because sometimes on, on a rare occasion, the altar statement may not be in there on purpose. You know what I'm saying? But it's like a real, real rare case. But I'll, even with that, I always reach out to let them know that, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's all good, Jamal. Don't worry about it. Okay, cool. So they was like, oh, good catch, Jamal. I'll send it to you right away. And then when they, when they uh, realized that the altar statement wasn't in there, they found out that her numbers was off. Mm. And she had told me that when I got there at uh at the appointment, you know, she was like, she's like, I'm glad you told me what you told. Me. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, what you mean? She said, just just this morning, just this morning, I found out that the numbers was off. Yeah. And I'm saying she said, she said, had I not told what I told, so like check the numbers and verify before we get before we hook up to avoid, you know, any delays or any like, you know, from the appointment from going smooth as they post the you know what I'm saying? How, how the poems are designed to go. So, so, um, so that, that, that happens. 
and I just pretty much, man, just pretty much just deal with it uh, from there. But uh, but the but the title company and sign services, they definitely appreciate when you notice, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it is an error and the document's not being, um, not being uh, present. Yeah, you know, um, I, I always, like, people that want to go into, like, be, to become a loan signing agent, I always recommend that, one, you know, take a, you know, learn what the loan officer duties are, right? Because what you're going to need is, which they, I don't know anybody that's really teaching this. I, I know I, I'm not teaching it, but I worked, I worked with loan officers before in a title company. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to understand the moving parts of the whole, the whole machine, right? Because it gives you better insight on, one, how, how to price your services, right. two, how to solve the problem more effectively. Three, who are the key players in, in, in that closing happening, right? Right. Because you'll, you'll, you'll get a phone call from a realtor and you think she's a key player, but it's really not the realtor. It's actually the loan officer or right. the closer, right? Right. So if you're really going to attack this industry, the real estate industry, which is, there's plenty of money to be made in it. I mean, like, it's, it's ridiculous, but you have to, to be effective, part of the notary 300, learn what these loan officers and title companies and even the lawyers have to go through. Like, so you understand the channels that, it, okay, the loan officer gets this, the lawyer's gonna approve it, the closing agent, it, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you say about that? You're right, you're right. Sit back and um, you know, just peep in game, analyze it, ask some questions. And then, you know, too, the only way you really go know it is by being consistently in it, you know? Yeah. Um, and like I said, and then too, a, a great way by being, a great way how I learned the document, like I said, by working with like certain companies, cause you know, they like my services, they like how I communicate. And they also said that, you know, like their actual signers, you know, like the clients, they like me. So, yeah. so, so like I said, so, so, Another, another, you know, I'm saying to go back to your original question, what's the good, the bad, the ugly? Like I said, so me opening <laughs> up and expanding my level of communication, you know, I said, I actually enjoy, I actually love the notary game, but like I said, but like the, like I said, like the bullshit that come with it, like I said, like with the title companies trying to like, you know what I'm saying, lowball the whole game by setting up these signing service companies and they want to pay you less. And then too, a lot of people, like I said, um, I have not personally experienced this on a consistent basis. I mean, let me say that I, I have experienced it, but not on a consistent basis. What I mean by that, I haven't uh, experienced like these uh, super, super top paying uh, title companies where it's like, where on average they paying you like 150 and up. Like how, how, how like a lot of YouTubers and how, and how like a lot of the information is being promoted out there. I have not, me personally, I have not experienced that. Mm -hmm. uh, on a consistent basis. Like, yeah, I do run across it every now and then, don't get me wrong, but but it's not like that. But then again, but remember I told you too, bro, I think by me living in a major city, yeah. by I really believe like the long sign of agents here in Chicago, it could be somewhat, you know, uh, flooded, whatever. Because mm -hmm. the reason why I say that, because uh, I was trying to sign with this one, I'm gonna name the name this, uh, I was trying to sign with this one signing service company and, you know, they wanted, you know what I'm saying? Like they want to work with me, but when I gave them my price, you know what I'm saying? Via on the application, they had you feel like, like this long ass like application, whatever. Um, I'm like, cool, I'll, I'll fill it out. You know what I'm saying? But it took me a while to fill it out because I said, that's how busy I've been. Like I had application mm -hmm. for months and I'm just now finishing it up. So they would, so, so they was at, you know what I'm saying? So basically they was presenting like their proposed fees. For instance, they want to pay you like um, 65 or 60 bucks for a refi. That's just like fucking nuts to me. That's just like crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's just like, that's basically like, that's equivalent to like minimum wage. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. for the notary uh, real estate side of it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like I said, mm -hmm. you know, compared to like these super title companies that you know what I'm saying that people earn 150 bucks or 125 on a regular basis, so that's like less than half of that. So 
when I sent them back my proposed price, they sent me back their, uh, you know what I'm saying, their uh, counter offer. And it was like maybe about like five dollars more than what their actual offers is from the beginning. So what, 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 where do you think they get the audacity to ask that? Man, uh, that's a million dollar question, man. I can only speculate and you know what I'm saying, just based off what I, you know what I'm saying, what I've personally been um, dealing with, like with like other notary agents and uh, just myself and you and I, and you know, with Andre and then the whole like, I think it just come from, like you said, like uh, with the whole pandemic, you know, everybody been trying to scramble, so to speak, to figure out how to keep the lights on. And then, okay. you know, like with uh, with guys like, you know, like Mark Wills and Bill Soroka courses, whatever, especially Mark Wills, you know, he like the, the face of the industry. Just yeah, 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 yeah. His, his course is thorough. I will give him yeah, that. Yeah, they do. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know, and he gets to the point and, you know, uh, even though I know people got their, like, like their different opinions about him, including myself, but I can honestly say, you know, he definitely showed me how to put food on my table. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Definitely that. And that's something I can't take away from, you know, and everybody go have an opinion about mm -hmm. the nuances to any goddamn course. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, like as you learn, as you learn, you participate more in your uh, appointed industry, you just go learn and grow in your way, even from what you learn uh, from whoever you got your, uh, your uh, foundation of knowledge from. But you should always, you know what I'm saying? But if the foundation that you learn from that particular course, like this is Mark Wills, it still should stick with you. So what's so dope to me about his, 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 his course, to me, mm -hmm. one of the things was like how he'd show you how to explain the documents. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Pretty much just like, you know, brief overview, getting to the point, keep it kicking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, instead, you know, I know some people, they want to like, you know, I know like some people like, like get like overly intimidated and they shook themselves, so to speak, and put too much pressure. Basically, you know, if you able to like teach what Mark Wills or what, Tiger teach or what Bill Soroka teach and a couple other notary uh, uh, courses teach, whatever. The key to it is, what I found out for me is to make it your own. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Even, even if it's shorter than what they teach you, if that's you, that's you know what I'm saying, and uh, like I'm saying, like, if that's your style of communication, make it your own, embrace it. And I think that's a way you can find more enjoyment. I mean, well, at least I do. I find more enjoyment doing it that way. And I don't feel as like uh, constricted. You're right. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, I still feel effective and the appointments is efficient. Cause you know, so you already know, bro, I'm fast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fast. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I believe in being efficient, bro. Cause I know too, like a lot of the, uh, the borrowers that I come across with, man, especially like here in Chicago, you know, People got other shit they want to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, but you go run into the people that want to take their time, want to read line by line. And see, yep. before in the beginning, I was jeering for that because, you know, I didn't know no better. I'm like, well, shit, if I do this or, you know, if I come across rules, then they go, they go rat me out to the damn signs that come there, hire me, and then they don't want to work with me no more. They ain't going to want to, you know what I'm saying, collab mm -hmm. with me no more. But that was all just rhetoric, just nonsense in my head. Now, now, true indeed, don't get me wrong, that, that can be a reality for, for, for a lot of us, but just so happened uh, has not been my reality. So I've learned the more and more I, I've uh, been out here in the game, like when I do run across those who want to read live by line, I say, hey, I understand you might be astute or whatever the case may be. I understand that you know you're making a, a, like an important decision in your life. However, I'm a full-time loan signing agent mm -hmm. and the appointment's pretty much designed to work in both our favor. What I mean by that, you still have up to three business days to change your mind and the cancel is long. So that's a real opportune time to get mm -hmm. more familiar with the docs. And if you have more in-depth questions, you can reach out to your loan officer or your escrow officer and he or she can go over to the, into more greater detail. I like that. I'm allowed to. I said, so you release however, yourself from all the liabilities on right, that. Yeah. Right, right. Because you know I'm saying, I mean, because I mean, if, if you let people read live by line, and then you know I'm saying, I also add this on that too. I said, however, if I allow you to keep reading line by line, we'll be here past, um, uh, we'll, we'll, say we'll be here past the hour, and I have other appointments after you, and then you know I'm saying, after you, and just how I show up to you on time, I would like to show up to them on time, and I know they're waiting on my arrival. So, mm. So, mm. so, 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 so I can't give you 
uh, the loan documents, a copy of them, three day right to cancel, and you still want to monopolize the time. That that we have to we have to build a level of trust. And I tell them that I said I said you have to trust when I'm telling you what the documents say on on some like on some overview clip no shit. And you know what I'm saying? If you need further explanation, as I said before, reach out to the loan office. Oh, I love it. Uh, so we, we're, we're going to go into um, the live q and in, in just a second. But um, if you have any questions, put it in the chat. If you want to go live, type in live. I, you guys, you know how we get down. We, we jump on live and we chop it up. We family here. So we, Jamar, what advice would you give someone that is considering get going into the loan signing agent side of work. What what <laughs> what is what is a some great advice you would give like your 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 nephew or your son or your daughter like they want to do what you do. What's right. the best advice you would but give? Some them? best advice. I don't know if it's the best advice I can give or the best. But I tell you what, I I, I can tell them some real solid best advice that something. Uh, some as a matter of fact, it's part of something that that, that, that you and not discuss. As I was building my loan signing business in the beginning, first and foremost, um, run it like a business. Mm. Run it like a business. So put your entrepreneur hat on. You know what I'm saying? Don't put. You know what I'm saying. And what I mean by that, don't necessarily. Uh, put on a front like your entrepreneur, but actually learn to become one. Let that shit come from inside out, not outside in. You know what I'm saying? Don't, 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 don't wear it. Be about it. I would definitely say that. I mean, from from you having like uh, uh, efficient, up to date uh, tools like like uh, a dope printer, uh, the right notary journal, uh, dressing. Dressing uh, professional, like see me, I'm, I'm big into like, you know what I'm saying, dressing business uh, casual. So that's cool for me. And I know everybody got different price points and different budgets to, to extend it that. Not that I'm out here trying to be like on some Ralph Lauren Gucci stuff and all that. I don't, not like that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Spending my profits on just shit is going to uh, depreciate. No, but just looking a certain way that I can like look forward to getting up and going out in the field every day. So I would definitely say uh, uh, run it like a business. You know what I'm saying? From A to Z, run it like a business. Run it like mm. a business. You know what I'm saying? You know, that means having a business account, uh, having a uh, having a uh, LLC or a corporation. You know, I'm no tax accountant or anything like that. So I can't give, I'm not qualified to give out uh, tax advice or corporation advice, but you get the idea of what I'm saying. Uh, just, you know what I'm saying, taking care, you know what I'm saying, keeping up your appearance and um, being and willing to be consistent whatever you do, you know what I'm saying? Do, I mean, doing this doing this consistently every day, right? I'm not, I don't say whatever you do because we're talking about the long sign because that's what you asked me. So willing to be consistent, that's the only way you really go be successful. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's being consistent. And consistent could be three signs a day, both signs a day, two signs a day, a uh, couple of signs a week, whatever your, whatever a person's uh, uh, goal is to become consistent, whatever they want to get out of it, whether it's on, on, on a consistent part-time basis or a consistent full-time basis, consistency is really the magic key that all these success teachers always talk about yeah. at the end of the goddamn day, consistency, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't trying to be consistent in whatever you, your chosen field, and in this case, the notary industry, you not go get the reap, you know what I'm saying? You not go uh, reap the benefits of the rewards, even through the uh, through the war scars that I constantly earn. You know what I'm saying? It's still glory in that. And I would say another thing I would uh, I would advise people on is uh, level up on your fucking confidence. Mm. Level up on your confidence, 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 confidence. I repeat, confidence, confidence. What? What? Now, why do you why do you say that? Uh, to have the confidence to, to like knowing your self worth, having confidence to uh, you know know that you're gonna do a good job, everything's gonna be okay, no matter if you do fuck up at a damn close. You know what I'm saying? Just having confidence uh, and knowing that you can reach your goals if you, you know I'm saying choose to be consistent. You know what I'm saying? And just having confidence, like I said, I mean, remember that uh, one example I just I just uh, shared with the world and with your audience mm -hmm. about how when I used to run to those that want to read line by line on the documents, yeah. 
my confidence back then wasn't where it's at now. Gotcha. So, so you probably would have never said that to the client then. Right, back then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then too, I think I think a lot of my confidence is built off um, just my goals and two and two um and two like since I'm big on my time. Since I'm big tech, on my tech time. is a fool, man. <laughs> he said something about some donuts or some shit. He said, Have you ever bought donuts and gift cards to the title card? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Yo, I know where he got that no. from too. I, I know where he got that shit from too. <laughs> right, I already know. <laughs> Cause you know he asked why your boy not now. Uh, I kind of got like an idea why he did that, but you know. Just basically, man, you know, try and get that. Uh, I guess it's like a. Uh, it has been like a, a tried and true way, you know, to 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 possibly increase your chances of getting more direct uh, work or title work. But you know, different strokes for different. Oh, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because you know, no man, I ain't never, I ain't never, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never. I ain't never thought about shit. You know what I'm saying? Shit, my coffee donuts to them is uh, is providing flawless. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, well, well executed uh, documents to them, man. That's my. Uh, that, that's how I see it, man. It, like you know, if you're, it's it's a business to business transaction. So if 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 your respective business, their respective business, I shouldn't have to bring tea and scrumpets to you, dude. Right. <laughs> right. It's a, just a mutual thing. We we provide the service, you you cut that check, we keep the relationship going like that. Yeah. Oh god, that yeah. I, I, I saved my tea and scrumpets for uh the ones that, that work directly for me, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know, you know, the last I mean, oh. you know, like I said, I, I just I just haven't I just haven't shit. did it, man. I, I I believe like I just meet person, I just don't I don't I don't really think it's needed, man. So I I, yeah. I think like you know, uh, your services should be the charm. Your services, how you get down, you know what I'm saying, your personality, how well you communicate. Cause you know, this this business like any other business is all about communication. And you yeah. know, if they see you consistently, one of those people that communicate, what I mean by that, like you will call and ask questions if you get stumped by something or if the borrower wanna know something, or you know, you got a question about the docs, you know, escrow officers, they like that shit. You know what I'm saying? They like yeah. that shit. They say like a lot of times people try to go off the guessing game and a lot of times the guessing don't always, you know what I'm saying, lead to a, a fruitful outcome. And like I tell people, mothers don't pay me to guess. They pay me to execute the signing. They pay me to go off what I do know based off, you know what I'm saying, what's true and what they want. You know what I'm saying? They don't pay me to guess. So if I feel I'm about to guess on something, you know what I'm saying? I just go ahead and get that, you know what I'm saying, make that call. You know what I'm saying? Even sometimes it may be hard to get in contact with somebody. I'd rather do that than have to drive my ass all the way back. Like I said, I'm here in Chicago, y'all. So it just said if I had to drive my ass all the way back 30 miles out to um to get something that I miss when I could just yeah. call them right then and there. So like I said, so I'm big on my time, you know what I'm saying? I'm big on um and I respect everybody's time. So I think, um, like, so I mean, I mean, so back to what I was saying before. Uh, a man asked about the uh, about the tea and crumpet type shit, the donuts. Um, yeah, I think my confidence is built on you. Know what I'm saying me valuing my time. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So I think so, that's the best thing I can give somebody is run it like a business, have confidence, and be willing to just learn along the way, and always be open and keep your mind fluid to do the same thing you do every day, a better, more efficient way. So a lot of stuff that I learned that made that worse for me, nobody taught me. You know what I'm saying? I just had to just learn off observation. Once again, I think learning off, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just just uh, value my time. Like, okay, if I do mm -hmm. that, do that. And then you know what I'm saying? So if I value my time more, I could, I could do more loan closings, you know what I'm saying, on a day to day. You know, I think like um, a lot of the, notaries that are coming into the game right now, they just don't know how to price their services correctly. So title companies, escrow companies, one, one thing you have to know about these loan officers is that they're salespeople. 
they are straight up hardcore salespeople. If you, you can literally go on YouTube and see what the job duties of a loan officer is. Mm -hmm. When you see how these guys get down, some of them will eat their own young because what happens is they're, they're, they have somebody do a lot of the cold calls. Sometimes they'll do a lot of the cold calling themselves. They have a list. They're trying to convince this person that they need to refinance their home uh, at a lower interest rate or whatever the case is. And they're literally like closing the deal, a, a, a you know, sometimes a six figure deal over the phone. And then they have to run to the person's house, get them to sign documents, run back and stuff like that. So once you understand, like these people are literally negotiating and closing you on taking a lower, a lower pay, pay rate, mm -hmm. you'll approach it differently. I think a lot of people think they're a loan closer. You know, this is a loan closer. He, he just wants to give me some business. No, this guy is a hardcore salesman. <laughs> hardcore. They're, they're almost damn near like timeshare, bro. Right. I kid you not. You know what? Of them are like, they're so hardcore that um, they'll put that, you know, the first thing that I remember when I worked at a title company, they're mm -hmm. like, the first thing you need to do is try to, is convince your, what do they call it? Your circle of business, like your mom, your uncle, start closing their deals, their deals first. Right. And then start expanding outward. Mm. So a lot of them are attacking their, their, their family members first. So what happens is if I could sell this to my mom, who I love very dearly, mm -hmm. I could sell this to somebody that's not related to me at all. With, right, with no problem. With no problem, no emotion mm -hmm. attached to it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So then they attack, that's how they attack the industry. So if they say, hey, look, if I could save money on this, and what's crazy is the, the notary is the gatekeeper. Like you can't get past that, that person. So I think if the notaries realize their self-worth and stop lowballing themselves and invest in yourself, like you, you invest in yourself. You've taken yeah. a bunch of people courses, right? Mm -hmm. And you've oh, learned yeah. the game, which yeah. built up that confidence for you to be able to attack the industry the way you do. Now you're doing over a hundred signings a month. If you mm -hmm. just invest in yourself, you will, you won't feel short change. You won't say things like this notary business ain't shit. Like I will, I, me personally, I won't first say the notary industry. It took me out of an engineering and truck driving job. Right. This industry has been really, really good to me. Right. You're right. It's, it's a dope ass, it's a dope ass industry. And like you said, I didn't even know that the loan offices get down at that because I personally, uh, like Foz, like, uh, having a loan officer like reach out to me and say, hey, Jamal, we got a loan, blah, 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 blah. I don't really, they don't really be the ones that contact me. Now, I don't know how it's like other signing agent professionals, but for me, that has not personally happened. I normally either talk to, like I said, somebody from the title company, whether it's like the regional manager, I talk to them a lot, you know what I'm saying, with certain title companies I work with, or the escrow officers, or uh, the signing services themselves. And, um, uh, like I said, so I know the game, you know what I'm saying? It's beautiful. As I said, it is, I know it, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? When it comes to that bread, everybody's trying to get, you know what I'm saying? Like TJ Maxx, motherfuckers trying to get the max for the minimum out of yeah. all of our motherfucking ass. Indeed. You know what I'm saying? At the, at we the got end. a question here too. Um, so it says, what one piece of advice would you give to someone who has been an employee their whole life and taking a chance at entrepreneurship? Good question, Tech. Um, well, you said one piece, I mean, well, I, I would tell him this, I would tell him this. Now, now remember earlier in this conversation, I was saying like, uh, I gave like a quick story about the whole, uh, my old job at the, uh, you know what I'm saying, at the hospital, at the University of Chicago Hospital. Um, how can I word this? I would say, I would say, even though I was always known as a hard worker, I was always about my bread. You know what I'm saying? Doing overtime. Like I remember it was a couple of times, but I, I was getting it in for like, you know what I'm saying? Even though it was illegal back then, but it is what it is. Um, I was doing like 21 hour shifts sometimes, bro. 
You know what I'm saying? But because they knew they could, because the department knew they could rely on me and they knew I wanted it. You know what I'm saying? And this, like I said, I had girlfriends at the time, all that. But, you know, when I was in focus mode, hey, I'm in focus mode and I get to the other shit later. But the, back to that question, I would say uh, just know on some entrepreneur, you know what I'm saying, the world, prepare to work more hours. Mm, good advice. That that is that is the unspoken truth right there. Yeah, prepare to work more hours, and so that kind of goes into um, the um, the uh, the mentality. I'm pretty sure you heard it before. I'm pretty sure everybody else heard it. Like you know, find some work that you go fucking enjoy. You know what I'm saying? Find something that you go, you know what I'm saying? You ain't gotta, they, they don't mean like be phony enjoying it. That mean like actually enjoying it or actually liking the challenge or actually respecting the challenge enough to get your ass up every day and maybe have to go your way, you know I'm saying? Or take your ass to bed late every day and get back up and do it all over again. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Without sleeping all damn day. You know what I'm saying? Cause it be sometimes, like I, I told, I'm saying, I'm telling uh, uh, Tiger earlier uh, when we had a conversation, that uh, I'm working on a website and not me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm a web developer, but just working with my web developer along with doing uh, loan signings, along with doing uh, like answering my phone and like getting new appointments along with actually calling confirm with the uh, with the borrowers, staying in contact with the borrowers, going pick up my printing supplies, going pick up paper. It's, you know what I'm saying? All those like, you saying, as you say, moving parts, and trying to build a website in town of mind, because I thought my website would be ready uh, today, but that's not the reality. So, but it should be ready by this weekend for real, for real. Yeah. So, so prepare to work long hours, you know what I'm saying? Embrace that, embrace that, and embrace that, especially if you got goals, especially if you're trying to like, you know what I'm saying, like, like get out of debt, or you try to go to the next level, whatever the next level might be for you. And 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 hopefully. If you are in a relationship or you are married, you with somebody that that's gonna, you know what I'm saying, they understand that some of y'all time together may be sacrifice. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That is so true. Definitely gonna have to be sacrificed. So so having um having you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, also too, um prepare to become uh more more emotionally mature. You know what I'm saying? Prepare to become more, you know, like, like a lot of shit that used to like bug me or like irritate me. It did, mm. you know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. Like, I ain't saying like, I just graduated on this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm fucking like Jedi master of this shit. <laughs> shit like that. I ain't putting it out there like that. But I came a long fucking way in a lot of shit, even in this industry and in the Uber game and just in life in general, you know what I'm saying? Just by being an entrepreneur. Cause you know, working with people you got to be able to like, you know, see things from other people's point of view at the yes. same time, be you. You have to still be able to like, let people know what your expectations is, what you try and get out of shit. You know, so you got to, you know what I'm saying? So for a lot of us, that's going to come with like growth and emotions. And if you haven't like, like, like uh, being like in a toxic ass environment uh, or some shit like that, that's going to fuck with what you're trying to do on the entrepreneur side. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The toxic environment be like your home environment, being with your girl or, you know, for women, being with your man. And, you know, that can get ugly. I know that's a whole other different, like, podcast within itself. I could, whatever. But but definitely uh, uh, becoming more, learning to become more emotional, mature. And um, and the first one I said, uh, just prepare to work long hours and, and feed your mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, just go elevate your attitude. You know what I'm saying? Towards yourself as well, you know what I'm saying. Um, towards towards your towards your self concept, you know what I'm saying. Okay. Because because in order to be like, let's like on the upper echelon, whatever you might consider upper echelon, mm -hmm. you gotta look at yourself in the mirror and like, you know what I'm saying. I rock with you. I fuck yeah. with you. No matter what, through the good, bad, the ugly, through the slushy side town, streets in the snow, I fuck with you, Jamar. No matter what, you gotta tell yourself you are the flies notary out here. No matter what the fuck happened, if your car break down, if a motherfucking barber say you suck at whatever the fucking case may be, or you forgot your script, you still gotta feel like that fly dude or that fly female when mm. you 
I love I love that, man, because, uh, yeah, well, you know, this is one of the reasons why I rolled out the notary war room is to, one, everything is always changing, right? Like, yeah. uh, you know, a year, a year ago, there was no COVID. Nobody was walking around with masks all the damn time, right? Right. But now we are. So right. what, how do we prepare for that? Um, how are things changing in the real estate side and home life and all of this stuff? So it's it's like, it's a war room. And yeah. I, I'll explain it again. The war room, when you're going to war, you're not just fighting on land. You're fighting in the sea. You're fighting in air. It, it is a fight in all terrain, like the yes. part of war. So yes. the better you equip yourself to be able to navigate through this, this lifestyle that we call entrepreneurship, you're more than just a notary. No, the notary just happens to be a profession that you chose, but yes. you're more than a notary. You are, you are this celestial being that can do anything. You just haven't realized that you could do that shit yet. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and just to add on to what you're saying, you're a celestial being and just so happen your current suit or your current costume or your current mm -hmm. masquerade is you a fucking notary. You a fly notary. Indeed. You know what I'm Indeed. saying? So no, matter, so no matter what entrepreneur industry you want to get involved in, you know what I'm saying? Look at it, like you said, like look at this shit as like a costume party or some shit like that. You know, I don't, I can't tell y'all exactly how to look at it. I'm just giving y'all like some little shit like how I look at shit just for my own personal self. And two, another thing I would say too, uh, uh, not taking shit so personal and all that shit. So if you take something like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think, I think, I think taking something personal is really like your call and your DNA to say you need to change some shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Instead, instead of taking shit personal, take that as a child, like, you know, I need to, I need to, I need to change this shit, whatever. Cause, cause at the end of the day, the outside world, outside motherfuckers is gonna be that. You know what I'm saying? That's how this shit is designed in this matrix, in this reality, and just with life in general. But since we live in, in America and all that, we gonna keep it there. But I'm pretty sure cross seas, whatever the case may be, I'm pretty sure people may have similar, you know what I'm saying, outlooks as I do, whatever. But uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely having that that mind frame has uh served me well, has served me well, but definitely um having the right environment, I think is I think is really, 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 really important, man. You know what I'm saying? Whether that environment is by yourself or whether you guys say you have a family or whatever the case may be, you know, definitely be be like the motherfucking old school commercial Mr. Clean, goddammit, and uh, <laughs> be willing to clean up your toxic environment on site. Don't wait for that shit to fester, because you already know, you know what I'm saying, just like with pest control and all that shit, whatever. If you wait long enough for, for, for problems to bloom and blossom, AK get bigger, it's yeah. more money for the pest control people. You get what I'm saying? Indeed. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 so it's like learn to like deal with toxicity on site. Learn how to get rid of toxic way of thinking, toxic habits, toxic people, you know, toxic conversations, toxic foods. Um, learn to get rid of that, you know what I'm saying, that shit. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think uh I hear like a lot of entrepreneurs talk about health and toxicity, but I don't hear it like, we don't hear enough of it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Well, everybody, everybody just so caught up in the light cameras in action, just chasing the bag. To me, entrepreneur is definitely a big part of chasing the bag, but really when you think about it, at least I do, entrepreneur is more like, it's, it's, it's a spiritual journey, bro. Yeah, it is. It it's is. I, I'll journey. agree with you it's on a that. a way to cultivate the real you, you know what I'm saying? Because because trust me, whatever problems that you had before your ass decided to be an entrepreneur, they're gonna show up in your in your industry. It's gonna show up. You know, you know what I'm saying? You can run, but you can't hide, like Ice Cube said. You know what I'm saying? You can run, but you can't hide from the West Side. You know what I'm saying? On that song called A Predator back in the day. But whatever problems that you may have in your life, whatever personal problems, whatever insecurities and all that shit you have, it's gonna show up in some sort of fashion. West yeah. Coast, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna show up in some sort of fashion. So, 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 be willing to like to confront and embrace who you really are—the good, the bad, the ugly. Indeed. 
So ladies and gentlemen, I really want to thank you guys for tuning in. This was a this was something that we were supposed to do last month. And we oh, we're right. here, we're here now, and we, we got it popping. Um, I want to I want to thank Jamar Ra for gracing the notary war room with his presence. Um, any last words, brother? Anything you want to leave leave off for the people? Like what Man, first of all, it was an honor, man, to be on here, man, for real, for real. I mean, seriously, man, and um, all those listening in the live chat room and um, those who listen on the podcast, man, you know, uh, I I'm definitely just honored to be here. Like I said, my man here, he's a great mentor. Like I said, he helped put that entrepreneur battery in my back. But uh, no, nah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just honored, man. And um, as I say, as I'm learning to say, like one of my favorite sayings of lately is, what a time to be alive. Mm. What a time to be alive. And this pandemic has been like a huge fucking blessing for me, man. I mean, seriously, you know, from the time when Uber got slow to the time where the notary industry saw me, you know what I'm saying, allow me to grow. I mean, mm. I mean, I say, even though, you know what I'm saying, like dealing with like lowballing ass, you know, title companies or, or, or you know, uh, signing services, it's all good, like I said, because I love the game. So I, I honestly, honestly, I mean, I honestly think that, you know what I'm saying, it was meant for me to do this. Like I said, you know, even even on my uh, not so good days, whatever, I'm still ready to get back uh, out there. Still, there, there still there's a lot in store for you, brother. I, I, I know some of the goals that you have in the future. So, you know, it, this is just a stepping stone for some of the oh. greater things that you have going on in the future, man. One more thing I want to say, because I know you, you know what I'm saying, your, uh, your, your time part is limited right now. I would definitely say, too, you know, uh, another another thing to uh, prepare for and to, to, uh, to consider guys who want to come into this industry and for those who's in this industry. Mm -hmm. Energy is the key. Having stamina is the key, because as he said, I have did like hundred closings before in, in uh, you know what I'm saying, in a month's time before, you know what I'm saying? So, so you got to have stamina and energy to deal with a multitude of people on a day-to-day -day basis. So the times when I am doing like a hundred closings in a month, that's like seven or eight signings sometimes in a day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so having the mental, you know what I'm saying? Like the mental energy and the physical energy, you know what I'm saying? So, so, and I know, that's a whole other podcast. I know, right, Tech? You know? Seven to eight per day. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Woo! yeah. Real, real, real talk, man. This, you know what I'm saying? No cap, no cap. Real Matter of fact, this past Friday, I had seven closings. It would have been eight, but one of them got canceled. So so having the, the, the uh, mental and physical fortitude for this, man, you know, to be consistent and to be successful and depend on your market, is another key thing too. And I know everybody ain't, ain't trying to do seven, eight. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like I said, I know, I know I got like shit I want to do, as my man just said. So, and then too, like, it's just me out here. So, so you know what I'm saying? I'm not in a relationship right now. So I can go ahead and do seven to eight without having like to feel like I'm shortchanging somebody or you know what I'm saying? I'm saying shortchanging them. It's like the girl that's, of my life. That's whatever. so damn important. Wait, wait, wait. I I, I was gonna <laughs> cut it off there, but we gotta go into that. See. So, this is this is one of the dopest things right here. It's because a lot of people don't don't see the backstory mm -hmm. of what you just said. What's see, that? they're looking at it as seven, eight appointments, right? Right. But no kids, not married, right? So you, right. you I'm married, you're living right. your best life right now. Right. So somebody that has that is married and has kids, dude, you're you're sacrificing the time that you can be spending with your family. You yes. so now you're okay. You're running seven, eight appointments. Yeah, you're making some good money or whatever. But when you get home, your your kids don't even know you recognize you. Your, right. your 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 wife is like, you don't spend any quality time with me. Now your home is in shambles. That is not being su a successful entrepreneur. There has to be a, a, at least a you know some a manageable balance, right? It's it's there's not going to be a balance. But there is like you can manage that a little bit versus hey Jamar Ra does seven eight I want to do ten twelve Jamar Ra is killing it right he, he doesn't have to report to anybody 
I got to report to my wife. I got to report to my kids after I get off the notary war room. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? I got to check right. in. Right. Right. I have to check in. Yeah, That's exactly. Like, desperate housewife, they got, you going to see him in the club shaking it up and shit. <laughs> I'm in a bottle with another nigga. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Try to Champagne get... sipping, wood grain gripping. Man, hey, <laughs> yeah, man, that, that, that seven, eight appointment life, man. I mean, yeah, man, you definitely have to consider all what? factors everybody's situation is different so that's why i wanted to uh to uh, to make that known but i have you know what i'm saying it's like a couple of youtube channels i checked out uh i have known this one person in particular they got a family and they do like 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 seven eight closings on average mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so so they definitely sacrificing they and i think like they only off day which is mine is, is, is on sunday you know that's the day that they spend time with their family and do what you know what I'm saying do do all that cool family stuff man but but uh put like this I wouldn't do seven eight closings if I didn't love what I do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I definitely now now then then too then again too another reason why I would do it too if I was like super super deep in debt and don't get me wrong we all live in America so we all got some form of debt you know what I'm saying that we all trying to clean up you know what I'm saying no cap in here you know I'm I'm pretty transparent when it comes to that, because I believe, especially us as black people, we got to have more open and honest, transparent conversations. I agree. I agree. You know what I'm saying, you know, if if we know what fucking millionaires make, or billionaires make, or six figure motherfuckers make, why we can't know what you know? what I'm saying how how come we can't discuss this, that, and the third? I know too. Our level of trust is is not there. Yeah. The whole conversation. Probably got to do another podcast for that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. but 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 yeah. Uh, Having the energy, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, not having like as less toxic shit around your life. Cause see, cause see what happens, man, what I'm noticing, man, I hear it like with the, uh, with the you know what I'm saying? I ain't capping, I ain't bragging, but like, the, you know what I'm saying? Several title companies and signing service companies have told me like the clients say that they like my energy. I've had clients tell me, text message me like weeks after the closing or days after close, like man, I really enjoy sound damn papers with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's me coach that that that's by me working on myself. You know what I'm saying? That's by me telling y'all all this stuff, y'all. The, 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 the audience asked me about my best piece of advice and all that. That's me working on myself. So I look at the being an entrepreneur, it's a spiritual endeavor. It, 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 I mean, what else could it be? We got another question. Uh, what do you so, think about hiring a signing agent, hiring assistant? Um, we kind of talked about that. printer drop off docs. Oh, okay. We kind of yeah. you know we, we kind of like talked about that earlier, right? Yeah. So 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 um, say the question again. Re re read me the so question. So, what do you think about hiring us? Hi, is that right? A signing agent assistant. A signing agent assistant. What would be their duties? So, uh, printer um, printing. So they would hire, uh, they would do the printing, dropping off the documents, emails, et cetera. Okay. Uh, this is something like, matter of fact, yeah, you and I talked about this. And all you do is, is just stamp. Yeah, but what, what we're doing is more right, virtual, right, right, right? right? He's right. talking about actually having a physical assistant. Assistant. I would say, I would say uh, if I did have the opportunity to hire like uh, a notary uh, sign agent professional assistant, hmm. I would say I would hire, you know what I'm saying, a uh, woman, whatever the case may be, to uh, to like, you know what I'm saying, like if I had it, you know what I'm saying, like on, on some wish list type shit, uh, mm -hmm. to like, you know, set the appointments with the borrower, uh, fill my calendar up, uh, you know, like order like, you know what I'm saying, like my paper, my, my printing needs and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And I would just like have it set up where the only thing I'm doing is just, Showing up at the appointment because I can't outsource that, right? And and me dropping off the documents, you know what I'm saying? So I would want to just deal with only the appointment based activities itself. You know what I'm saying? For me, for me, uh, you know what I'm saying? I print out the documents, right? So in your case, you would have to you would print, run to the, uh, print, notarize, scan. Well, print. Now, okay, print. let me ask you this. What's up? Do you have to scan your documents 
immediately after the closing, or that's something that you can hey, actually- That's tricky. I'm going to tell okay. you why, bro, because uh, some of these signing services and some of these title companies, depending on who you work with, is different. What I mean by that is like uh, someone wants you to like immediately scan after the closing, but depending on if you got like a mobile office in your car, and depending on how far the sign is from your 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 home office, because I'm pretty sure most of us got a home office or a, a building office, that may not be possible. Right. So with that being said, you got to let the sign. I mean, what I always do, I let the sign and service or the title company know, like, hey, you know, now uh, depending on if I got like other uh, appointments immediately following, who wants the scan back? I let them know, like, hey. Um, expect scan backs back in the next two hours, three hours, four hours, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, I mean, but I think I told you, I don't know if I told you again, but I um, I re, uh, I rearranged my, uh, my mobile office. So now my mobile office is way more efficient now. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, like, like me having a scanner in my car, me having a uh, printer and all that, you know what I'm saying? So I just gotta get like one or two more other things like like to make it like complete, then I'm I'm good to go. So I can, so at at that level of my mobile office now, I can uh, scan back documents uh, pretty fast. Now- I think so uh, um, Tech was saying your assistant would handle the scanning. Now here's the thing about that Tech, is that he would literally have to drive back to the home office to give the papers to his assistant to scan. And then most right. likely he's gonna have to take those paper paperwork back and drop it off at a UPS or FedEx for it to be overnight. Right. So that, that so you're you would actually be putting another task in between. Oh, know, so he's saying something about the he said, bro, the assistants would meet me at the what the uh the, the closing uh, location. Oh <laughs> okay. The right, right. The clothes. Okay. Oh, right. I can see. I mean, I can see that. But I would say, to be honest with you, man, if you got like a scanner in your car and you can power that baby up, that might be faster than having an assistant. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Always on deck because, like I said, because you know, you got to keep in mind too, like depending on where you're living at, traffic, this, that, and the third. Then, two, um, you know, if you know what I'm saying, you know, God forbid if something happened with the documents while they're in the hand of your assistant, yeah, you got to eat that blame. Yeah, because it, 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 it's kind of uh, to me, it, it, my frame of mind to think is like it's disruptive because you would have two people showing up to one appointment. That and then too, like I said, if something happened with the documents or they fall like unfriendly hands or some shit like that. Then the title company and the sign service company. They gonna be hollering. They gonna be trying to holler at you. So that might, I'm just saying, like in like in like in like a uh, out the box worst case scenario, that might jeopardize your relationship with it because you know, because you know too, like you know, like we still gotta like uphold like a level of like you know what I'm saying, like just like Secrecy, working like in the hospital, yeah, privacy like, and stuff. Right, you know what I'm saying, like the HIPAA laws. You know what I'm yeah. saying, like you know what I'm saying, kind of like with hospital patients. So we still gotta like up. You know what I'm saying so so like so that's why signing services. You know they always. Um, sign service and entire company say they don't want you hiring or subcontracting your your uh, your appointment that they schedule you for. Oh, really? That would be kind of yeah, yeah, man. So they all of them don't say that, but 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 every now and then I do see like including the loan documents. They say do not subcontract your signing to another um, uh, loan. I mean, uh, uh, signing signing service. I mean, a uh, loan resigning agent professional. Wow. Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't I, I don't read them contracts, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's, it's, it's like it's like part of the it's like it's like part of the uh the uh document. Well, what what somebody else say? Uh good idea. It was I don't know, it was another question. It was a a, a young lady had a question. Um one a lady. The, um Tanisha said good help is hard to find. Um it is a good idea, but they would have to be very trustworthy. Yeah, and it's and it's like and it's like it could get tricky. That's why I would say the the answer to that I'm saying to my man out in uh, out in Oakland, I would definitely say um, just get like a power inverter in your car so you can power up your uh, your scanner and be willing 
to invest, especially if you go see yourself doing this on a regular basis. Like I said, once again, I'm all about efficiency. And you yeah. definitely want to get you like uh, one of the, the, the higher end models of, of the scanners where you lease, where they lease be able to scan like about, at least about, uh, about, about, about 40, 45 pages and up per minute. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so I got that here in my, in my, uh, in my home office and I got a similar scanner out in the trunk of my car. Really mobile. <laughs> yeah, really mobile, man, because like I said, you know, it, it has been times where um, traffic wasn't on my side and um, I had to like uh, get some shit scanned back at the same time to go back out and do one or two other appointments. And it just like just stressed me out. Just, you know what I'm saying? For lack of a better word, you know what I'm saying? Just, just fuck my schedule up. You know, and then too, um, another thing to keep in mind too, like when you say about the scan backs, I noticed too, like a lot of these companies, they don't want to pay a decent price for scan backs. Mm. Some of these, some of these uh, signing services, uh, I don't see it too much with the title company. You mm -hmm. got to pretty much just ask for the title company. But like a lot of these sign services, man, they, be, they expect you to do like a refinance or a buyer's or seller's package mm -hmm. for $90 or less with scan backs. Or even as a damn loan application. Matter of fact, you remember uh, you remember the first signing service I told you that I got hired through, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Without saying no names. Uh, and you remember uh, I told you like what, what what my experience been like with them ever since. I really don't like too much work with them too much any longer. Yeah. But they still send me like you know offers through Snapdoc still every now and then, but not 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 very often. Uh, just the other day. They had offered me uh, a job to do a, a reverse mortgage. And I don't know if everybody know how big <laughs> that reverse mortgage is. <laughs> how many pages of reverse mortgages? Yeah, at least 200. At least. Minimum. Minimum. At least 200. So they were trying to get me to go out and do a reverse mortgage uh, application with scan. So, 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 so you know if a reverse mortgage uh, the actual uh, loan documents for, for for like reverse mortgage is at minimum two hundred. You know the goddamn loan application about one hundred fifty, if not two hundred, damn self. So. Right. <laughs> and they was trying to they was trying to they, they, and they presented an offer to me, and they, and I'm saying like and whoever else bid off of it, they bid off of it. They was trying to uh, get somebody to go out there and do it for uh, seventy five dollars with scan backs. And courier. Hmm. Did they have to drop it off at a FedEx too? Yeah. See that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, bro. Like that's the part. Hey, put it like this. Any anything done in the loan signing world, bro, just so I mean, I don't know if you're not clear or like anybody out there not clear or anybody just want to get like further information about it. All that shit gotta be ran back either through through UPS or FedEx per closing appointment. Per closing. Yes. So you always gonna have the courier service aspect to all of the assignments. And like I said, and so you having to provide scan backs in a timely manner, yeah. whatever the case may be, I say it's just additional stress. So yeah. I say I had to, you know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, a great part of life of, I'm saying, of a healthy individual is what? Learning how to manage stress. So that's why- I, Okay, you know, let me ask you this. Here, here, here comes another good question, man. What's up? Yeah, we 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 gotta do extended version. I'm gonna I'm gonna add an good. extended version to this, the video. <laughs> it's all good. It's the all bonus good. material. For sure. For sure. Okay, so let me ask you this. What's up? From the moment a title or escrow company calls you to when you actually finally complete everything. I mean, the the actual drop off to FedEx. Right, the beginning to end, the whole cust the whole journey. What is the timeline? I'm talking about driving everything, bro. Don't leave you nothing out. Driving. You talking about printing? You're everything. About I'm, about I'm trying to gauge a timeline. I need to understand how long does it take for one client? One, one client. One. Right. So from we the talking beginning about to end from emails. You got because you remember the last one we did. This lady damn near sent like 15 emails to me. I'm like, damn, Jamar, you got to go through this shit. Oh, yeah, you talking about when we first, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you got to go through all these damn emails for one call. 
I remember that. That was the clothes out the uh out the suburbs. I remember that shit. Matter of fact, it was last spring around this time. Yeah, yeah man. Yes. So yeah. so tech, pay attention to this, bro. Right, because, because beginning, uh, beginning to end, bro. I need okay. a timeline. Okay, okay. I mean, because remember in that scenario, the documents, all the documents wasn't present. And then remember, you know what I'm saying, because remember, that's how you started finding like, damn, like, bro, you, like all these documents, I'm like, yes, all these documents are supposed to be present for this type of clothes. I think it was a refinance or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. but anyway, to get back to the original question. So we ain't talking about, I mean, I'm, I'm saying, so what I mean by this, so we talking about me trying to contact the client to, uh, to, uh, to confirm the appointment. So we are saying, um, if they're not available, I got to leave my call script for that, you know, send my voicemail call script. And then a lot of times after that, I would, you know what I'm saying, depending on how much time I got, I would immediately text message them. Because see, even though a lot of title companies and a lot of signing services uh, don't like this, but this is the fucking 21st century. And this is the, right. modern, as you say, this is the rise of the modern notary. Notary, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Text messaging, a lot of times going to be your main mode of communication with Indeed. a lot of clients, man. Because a lot of clients, they don't ask, they, they, they don't ask their calls unless it's like maybe they family. Even with that, they probably put their ass on, on text message mode. So so I learned that quickly. <laughs> I learned that quickly that 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 uh, the main mode of uh, communication with a lot of people, including myself, is text messaging. So, so, so. Uh, so we'll take that in. And uh, also, too, shout out to Tiger Toledo, y'all on this. Uh, he the one advised me. Remember, you, remember this, bro? You told me I need to get that Swift key. The Swift key yeah. guy? Yeah. Now, you were saying that in the mode of, like, the general notary world. But, bro, has that been a fucking gold, <laughs> gold nugget in the uh, long signing agent world, bro? Like, my Swift it. key no when I'm talking to a client, cause I got like a, a business phone, you know what I'm saying? Through T-Mobile, through my business name, you know what I'm saying? Keeping everything official. As I say, you gonna do this entrepreneur shit, run like a business, run like a business and get you a business phone. You know what I'm saying? And allocate that with nothing but, nothing but business calls. So yeah. my Swift key know me so much. So when I'm texting my clients, potentially, you know what I'm saying? Like the clients, they are, you know what I'm saying? It's already keyed in, you know what I'm saying? No exactly. Yeah, so with that, uh, and also, like you said, waiting on the documents from mm -hmm. the title company and the signing service company to the time I print out the documents, to the time I sort out the documents. And if, and God forbid, if it's like a hiccup in the documents, meaning like a document I know is missing and all that, to the time I'm driving to the client, to the time I'm parking, find a park, depending on where I'm in the city, um, uh, to the time I actually meet the client, they open the door, and you know, a lot of too, a lot of people don't know this too, bro. I don't, I don't, feel, I don't think me and you never really talked about this, but I'm gonna put this out here too. Mm -hmm. Another thing too, guys, to be aware of before you come into this industry, a lot of clients are pet parents or they have pets, they got dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people, I know like, especially like a lot of women, they may not be comfortable with that, like, you know what I'm saying? Being embraced by dogs. And you know, mm. like some 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 borrowers, they will let you know, even like when I'm confirming appointments or through text message, they're like, hey, Jamal, we have dogs and cats. Are you cool with that? Absolutely. I am cool. Now, 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 now peep this, y'all. Now, I didn't grow up with pets. You know what I'm saying? My my mom, I grew up in a single house, a household. She wouldn't have that. She was scared of dogs and cats. She wasn't trying to, to her, that was like another bill. Plus she was scared out of mind. So, I have learned, you know what I'm saying, from my ex, because she had a dog. So I have like, so that was like the beginning of my pet journey. So it was like every everything I was doing, like the like like, like the five years prior to me becoming a long sign, it was like it's like just basically preparing me for this industry. Mm. Um, now now that I'm talking about it, not live with y'all. So so from so 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 now back to what I'm saying. So from the time I go into the client's home, do uh, execute the signing. And on average, for me, my signs take anywhere from like 40 to 50 minutes. Uh, that includes me uh, sign. I mean, that, that includes the bar of signing date, initializing all the documents. That includes me notarizing the documents right there in front of them. And that includes me getting them to sign my notary journal and double checking my work. 
Mm -hmm. So between 40, 50 minutes, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit longer, like I said, depending on if like the numbers ain't right, whatever the case may be, or like some other unforeseen circumstances that may extend it to happen, shit happens, you know what I'm saying, just like. But on average about between 45, I mean, between 40 to 45 minutes, 50 minutes at the most on, on average. Uh, so with all that being said, then to the time I'm dropping off the documents, I would say probably each appointment. But then you got to do the scan backs, right? right? Okay, 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 right, right. The scanning, this, that, and third. And can you know what too, man? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if you wear this, but I think I probably told you. Now you know they got two different type of scan bags, bro. They got what they call critical scans and full scan backs. No, now no, no. critical scan backs is like documents like the closing disclosure, the note, the uh, the mortgage. The uh, four five zero six T. That's a that that that's the tax document. The ten zero zero three. That's the uniform application. And they also changing the uniform application up, bro. Because before, what used to be, uh, the uniform application, maybe like four or five pages in the legal size documents, depending on who you work with, what title. I mean, what what, what lender, what title company you work with, they have decided. And I know this is more and more, bro. So, 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 all you notaries that's in the game now, y'all probably can feel where I'm coming from, and all you potential notaries, just be on the lookout for this. That now the the newer loan uh, loan applications is ten to fifteen pages in letter size documents. So, so once again, so continue on with my critical uh, 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 scan back list. So that majority of the alpha davids, the notice of right to cancel. Uh, the borrower certification, and if it's like uh, funds collected, meaning like if they owe funds at the closing in the form of a certified check or a personal check, some companies want them. Now, y'all mm -hmm. may be asking yourself this, or this is what I asked myself at least after a while. I did a couple of them after a while, and I saw what they was paying. I'm like, you pretty much sent over all the fucking documents. They just like nitpicking, like, we want this, we want this, we want this, we want that. So what I started doing, and I ain't mm -hmm. suggest this to nobody, but I'm pretty sure a lot of other notary signings are doing the same thing. I just sent them back the whole loan package. That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? It just makes sense because like, who the hell got time? Like I said, keep in mind, I'm doing on average uh, four to six closings a day and sometimes seven to eight. So who the hell got time to say Chicago or any other major city or any other, uh, you know what I'm saying, city or, or you know what I'm saying, state that you live in to like, nitpick through all of them right. documents and put them back in order that you had them yeah. in. Mm -hmm. No, nah, it's, it's not practical. Mm -hmm. So so whatever they pay me, like I said, if they paying like, you know what I'm saying, at the very low end, like I would say like anywhere between like 10 and 15 bucks on the, on the low end, that's about pretty much about, you know, about about fair, about, you know what I'm saying, about, you know what I'm saying, like for most of them go, go pay you. you. I have heard where people got like 25, Per scan documents, but that's probably more like towards like the end of the year, as we all know, when the industry is more busier. And like you, as you say, as, as Tiger taught me, when they're more pushed to get things done, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> done so they will, you know what I'm saying? So the price of meat go up like the Willie Dynamite uh, movie. Um, <laughs> straight up, man. But, but so what I, so, so with all that being said, bro. And then, but, so uh, after scan backs, and then you're doing the drop off. Right, right, right. Driving to UPS or FedEx, waiting in line for that. But the cool thing about FedEx, I don't know, you know about this. I don't know how often, I don't know how often you go to FedEx, but do you know uh, since the pandemic, FedEx has this machine, right? Yeah, I've seen that now. For FedEx, you can just scan it and then drop it off in the box. Right, built only for Federal Express packages only, which is perfect for the notary signing because. All the uh, FedEx drop-offs you're gonna do is what FedEx Express packages. Right. So so uh, so, but see all but the, but the thing with this, all FedEx don't have all FedEx locations don't have those. So not yet. Not yet. But 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 see but see, I got so cool with a number of different FedEx locations here in Chicago in the suburbs because mm -hmm. they see me all the time. And you know, we just build like a rapport and. And you know, I'm just like becoming more and more like a, I'm like a people person. Like I said, I enjoy what I do. So uh, one of the managers told me the only one that have those FedEx uh, uh, FedEx drop off boxes is the ones that are busy, are considered like you know, it's like a high value, uh, high traffic area. Okay. So they don't have a high traffic area. That means you got to stand in line. Is what I'm leading up to. 
And you know what I'm saying? You know, remember in the, pan in the pandemic, you know, everybody, everybody, out, everybody, mom out here hustling, everybody, mom out here sending shit through eBay or order stuff with eBay. So you got to deal with that, especially during the holiday. I don't even want to talk about that during the holiday season. Some of them lines was long as I don't know what. I mean, outside in UPS and in FedEx. So with all that being said, if I had to do like a grand total of, of, of the whole shebang, probably, probably looking like about like an hour and 45 to maybe like two hours per close. That's what that, I came on and- Probably this, more like this, two this, hours. When you throw in, like I said, traffic and depending on where you're going and, and all that, probably about two hours of the grand closing. And I was saying, all right, grand look, third, third, 30 minute. let's just say it's a 30 minute drive, right? Right. 30 minute drive. Then you get to the client's house, you say 45 to 50 minutes. I'll just right. say 45 minutes, right? 45 but minutes. But then you have to add your, your printing. You print it out. They'll probably take, you know, what, 10 minutes to print out. Well, you know, with my printer, man, ha ha. My printer, uh, I know I know the industry favorite is standard and the one that's widely promoted is the Brother Dual Trade printer. They print out like about, because I got one in my car, in my, mm -hmm. my trunk, my mobile office. They print out like about, spell like about, about, about 44 pages per minute at a time. But the print I got, it prints out 65 pages. Mm -hmm. a, minute. a minute. A minute, a minute. So, 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 so like, uh, I don't have to wait too long for, uh, uh, for my stuff to get uh, <laughs> put out. Said, that. Where that, you, you, oh, what was she saying? Can where you that show that, uh, that printer you got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can show it. If not, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna show it, and then I'm gonna tell you what printer model is and what's the making brand. I don't mind sharing that game. Okay. So, cool. let me see here. Let me know uh, if you guys. Hold on. Oh, it's the Lexmark. Okay. Yeah, Lexmark. And this is a dual tray. And let me see if I can. Nah, I gotta go up more. I gotta upgrade my uh, laptop game life, y'all. So pardon me. So this is a Lexmark dual tray model B2865. And I'm gonna pull it up. Hold on. Let me show y'all right here. Uh, hold on. Tech, this, uh, he said it's uh, anywhere from like, an hour, 45 minutes to two hours per closing, right? Is yep. that right, Jamar? Yep, that's why I said, yep. Yep, exactly. Can y'all see and, this? And, and that's him knowing what the hell he's doing, by the way. Right, right. That's, 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 because I say, right, right. You're talking about the whole grand total. Let me see. Can y'all see? Oh, there we go. Can you see it? Yeah. Right. So, that little light, that's like the little, like little, uh, you know what I'm saying? Let you know, like your status of supply settings, you know, work off Wi Fi, you know, all that fly stuff, whatever. But it's called a Lexmark B2865 printer. And um, it's, I said it's probably like about, like about 65 pages per minute. And yes, it's a different price point than the uh, brother. But man, to me, like I said, for how I get down, it's worth it. And the ink is not as much. As, uh, as 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 you guys would think, I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that. Because with the Lexmark printer, you got two options about ink, and this is the ink cartridge right here. Y'all see it? Mm. Right there. So with that, see Lexmark, you can buy you can buy like freshly new ink. What I mean by freshly new ink, like just uh, it's, it's a higher price point. And then they got something called like this like recycle program where you're trying to like go green and save the earth, things of that nature, whatever. So the ink, you know what I'm saying, so it's recycled, but it's still, it's still good to go, guys. I have not had not one hiccup in my printer. What I mean by that, my printer ain't never uh, just, just threw up ink all every goddamn well, nothing like that. So for the average price, for that cartridge that I, I mean, for that time I just sold y'all, I pay like about three thirty for that. Three hundred and thirty dollars for that cartridge? Yeah. Holy shit! Three hundred thirty dollars um, for that for that ink cartridge. But 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 I don't right. like, <laughs> like right, whoa. right 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 right. They're like, oh, <laughs> hey, 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 oh. hey, hey. <laughs> now hey, the hey, comments hey. coming through. They're like, God damn. <laughs> right, right. Hold on, wait a minute. Let me let me let me pull up some real quick, y'all. Why the questions coming? Give me give me one. Yikes! <laughs> pull up one 
one second out because I want to be accurate because I say I work with it. Woo! It is in this box. Shit. 330. Right, because right, it's called, yeah, it's called uh, one extra high yield. Uh, it ain't on the box. Hold on. Hold on one second, guys. I know y'all like, damn. Like, yeah, man, that's uh, Yeah, I mean, if I spend 330 on some ink, bro, that shit better print out half of Barnes and Nobles in this motherfucker, man. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> I feel you, I, and I feel it because I was like that at first. So I'm like, hold on, man, wait a minute, like what? <laughs> hold on, hold on, let me see, uh, Lexmark. We go figure this out, but but it's definitely it's definitely worth it, guys. Trust me, trust me. I'm about I'm about I'm about to get y'all that Zach. And I don't want to mislead nobody. Uh, B two A six five. So how long how long would a cartridge like that last? Well, for me. Uh, with the based on the volume I do, man. Uh, let's say, let, let's say, average, 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 right, right, average, average 150 man. documents, right? A uh, per per title company, right? How many, how many, how many assignments like that? 150 docs. Okay, right now I'm on, I'm on the Lexmark website now, and I'm, I'm looking at the exact tone that I get and the pages that yield on average, thirty thousand pages. Th that's impressive. 30,000 pages. So, so for me, God so damn. For me on, yeah. So for me, right here. So for me, can you see that on the screen? Yeah. That's, that's not bad. So, right. So, one. so for me on average, bro, I'm probably like, I could probably burn through one of them probably like anywhere between, um, um, three weeks and a little bit under three weeks. So that's about 200 assignments. If the average assignment is 150 documents, you you can literally print out about 200 assignments. Yeah, right. it, pay, it definitely pays for itself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, right, right. I mean, I mean, because remember, keep in mind, I got to print out the documents for yep. the nine yep. to keep. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Right. So 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 I'm printing out two sets of documents per sign. So I'm printing out literally. So if the average refinance is 150 pages, I'm printing out actually 300 to leave one copy with the borrower. Oh really? Yeah, man. Is that is that what is that's that standard. typical? That's, that's that's by put like this by law you're supposed to do that, and that's what the title company uh, and signing services, no matter who you with, they're gonna expect you to do that. So that's just a part of the real estate closing game, y'all. Now, 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 like I said, so I'm yielding thirty thousand pages. For uh, and like I said, like with tax and free shipping, because I know where to go to get it at. And uh, those who are interested, whatever we can, we go you know saying we 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 can work some out. I can tell y'all, I can tell y'all where to get it at. Um, uh, damn, what was I saying? You were saying that the you know the typical is like oh right right right. So so compare this to like the brother yeah uh, 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 laser. I mean I'm saying like dual tray printer, bro. If uh, I think like. Their their high yield cartridge only puts out like about a little bit less than ten thousand for the for the for the most popular brother printer that's been widely promoted, which is when I got right. out of the car. So so and and that's like about on average because I was getting mine through 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 Sam's Club. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they, they got like the cheapest price along with, with with Amazon. Shit, you you paying like about 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 a buck ten a buck fifteen just for one of those. So, yeah. shit, so, so, like, I noticed, like, in the summer, I was burning through them. And then, you know, like, a lot of times, you know, like, as the, as the uh, notary signing agent gang got more and more popular due to the pandemic last year, and, you know, it was the point in time where Amazon completely sold out of the printers, and they had, like, uh, back orders for the actual uh, toner cartridge. So I had to mm -hmm. start getting them more through Sam's Club, and that's when I found out Sam Club's price is a little bit cheaper. But 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 here's the thing with Sam Club was that they only allow you per month. Check this out, y'all. They, they put regulations on that motherfucker. Mm. Meaning that you couldn't get no more than, I believe, two or three toners at a time per month per customer. Really? Yeah, so I was going past that. I was going past like the allotted, uh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Uh, ink, I'm saying like uh, about say ink cartridge, laser, la laser toner, a la laser toner cartridge. They will allow me to purchase in a month time. So when you compare those, cards, like I said on average, like I said, less than 
uh, you get less than 10,000 yield, you know what I'm saying, uh, for, that, for that particular uh, printer model, the Lexmark, you come out better in the long run. Of course, the printer itself is higher, way higher. It's a little bit higher on the front end, depending on how you look at it. But the toner itself, it pay for itself. See, I, you know, you, I, I just learned something today. Um, I, I did not know that you would have. Well, you know, I don't do the loan signing personally. I, I contract that out. But right, I did not know you would have to. You have to print out an extra set. Oh, you ain't know that? Okay. I thought I told you that. I, I I didn't know consistently. I know some oh, some of the yes. loan companies we dealt we dealt with. They tell us, can you print out an extra set? Sometimes I even ask them, and they'll say, no, it's not necessary. Bro, they'll send a copy. Bro, that's a part of the game. For you know, what I'm saying like, if, if you ever get that, like you know, saying like those type of clients again, yeah, hey, that's that's consider that a blessing, bro. But for the most part, that's a standard part of the game, bro. Is print out an extra set of documents for the client. And keep in mind, remember we said, you know what I'm saying, like, even though we joked about it, about them damn reverse mortgages, them, 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 them haunted house size ass documents yes. and shit. So, so, so you would literally, literally uh, yield, you know what I'm saying, end up using a whole stack of one ream of paper just for a reverse. Uh, no, I'm pissed off that I, I could have been making more money. I would have been charging their <laughs> ass a little bit more. Yeah, 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 bro. Yes, you have to. So, so, so that's why I said. So, with the thirty thousand joint, it just make more sense just based off the number of closings that I've been doing up until this point. Now, everybody like starting the game, they probably don't want to do it like that. You know what I'm saying? The brother, the brother printer makes more sense in the beginning. But depending on how hard you go at it, and depending on how much you love it, because I don't think I would go hard into it if I didn't really love it, been into it. I mean, to be into yeah. it, to be honest with you. That's what led me up to this baby right here, man. Yeah, Tanisha said there was there was uh, only one lender uh, I had to sign that they did not want to print out two copies. Yes. So yeah. so shit. I mean, so she just proved what I said. That's yeah. a rare moment, bro. Yeah, you should have been. Uh, yeah, because you know I, I charge a minimum of sixteen cents per page. I wish you had told me that you didn't, that you wanted, I thought I told you that, but man, I, hey man, if I, if, man, I would have told you a long time ago. Well, only because I, I don't print out the document. So, you know, I pretty much left it for the signing agent to do that. But now I feel bad because I could have been paying the signing agent a little bit more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I could have, yeah. I could have paid that signing agent a little bit more for printing out that extra set of copies versus like they're running up their toner and they only, you know, I'm thinking they only print out one set. Mm -hmm. And then the title company actually mm -hmm. will send a copy to the client. Mm -hmm. No, man. That's in the general notary world. But in this world, in the real estate mortgage industry, no, nah, man. They expect two sets of copies on letter and legal size of uh, uh, paper. Yeah, I could, I, you know, at 150 pages at... 16 cents minimum like i'm about to go up on that i i could have made an oh, yeah, additional bro. 24 dollars <laughs> and then split that with the notary in the joint you know hey hey bro hey 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 go ahead and continue blessing the industry bro by setting by raising the stand seriously man because you know <laughs> hey man let's talk about that for a minute bro okay. you know <laughs> you know and i know man if the sign of service and the title companies feel they can get you they go get you oh yeah you know indeed so so I'm all about, I'm all, I love the game and I love, and, and, and I want other notaries to come in and existing notaries to come in for all of us to, to allow, you know what I'm saying, the, the title company and the sign services to let them know like, yo, bro, we are the, in, in most cases, I don't know if you know this, in most cases, not only are we the gatekeeper of the closing, but we are the only face that the client sees throughout the entire process. So we represent them, you know what I'm saying, whether we want to or not, you know what I'm saying, I'm saying we, we kind of like employees of them in a sense, whether we want to look at that, look at that or not, because at the end of the day, you know, no matter what, uh, they're going to associate me and who everybody else to come out to their, uh, to their home and say, okay, that's the, that's the guy or that's the woman that the title company hired to come out here or that's the lender who came out. I mean, because most people always ask, hey, do you work for Chase? Or hey, do you work for Bank of America? I'm like, no, I'm contracted by them. 
So I, I, talk, I work with a number of different uh, signed services and lenders. But, but yeah, man, so with that being said, man, we play in a very important role, bro. And then two in this, uh, a lot of people probably don't know this, or maybe a lot of people do, but a lot of the stories that the uh, borrowers or the signers slash signers tell me, like what they had to endure and go through the whole process, man, you know what I'm saying? Like from the point where it's been times where like during the pandemic that um, uh, the signers wasn't able to close to like six months later, man, to when they first applied for their refinance. So, you know, they stressed, yeah, man, they stressed out, you know, uh, oh. you know, it's been like, uh, like a lot of gaps and laps in time, you know what I'm saying? Where they hear from the loan officer or the title company, then they don't hear from them for like months and months and months. And then, you know, then they decide to like email them or call them, then they don't hear nothing back from them. And then suddenly uh, they get a call from like the title company or from the uh, loan officer saying, hey, are you available for your closing tomorrow or today or next week or something like that? You mm. know, or and I'm saying on top of that, in the midst of that, uh, you know what I'm saying? Through the, I mean, through the pandemic, everybody's scared shitless. What I mean by that, everybody is so afraid uh, whether or not can a borrower or a client still have the same ability to pay the loans they did when they first applied for the loan. So a lot of times, man, uh, these uh, title companies and these lenders, they asking, um, they, they, they are asking and stressing, the, I'm sorry, I'm saying, I'm saying, now I'm speaking for the, for the clients now, they are, they are uh, stressing the clients out by asking them to resubmit certain documents like two or three times, but it's proof of employment, tax, uh, you know what I'm saying, like uh, like tax documents, uh, uh, ask them to, to, to uh, call their employer or get certain paperwork. Uh, it's, it'd be a mess sometimes, man. So for us to come through with flying colors, you know what I'm saying, like on some fly notary type stuff, what I, I'm saying, like what you just said, what I meant by like continue to bless the industry, Yes, man, spread the love, bro. You know what I'm saying? Continue to be one of them signing service uh, companies that want to see, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, they want to make sure we all eat well, bro, because, because see, at the end of the day, I personally believe that all this damn uh, nickel and diamond shit that they got going on here with, like, with, with these signing services, it's going to come back and bite them in their ass. It's, it's actually happening now in small little ways, you know what I'm saying? Because the, the, the quality of service you know what I'm saying? It's not going to be there with a lot of these uh, uh, notary signing agent professors. They're going to be like, you know what? I'm saying, especially, when they get one, especially once they get hit to the game, like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give them just the bare minimum. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Especially, and, especially and, you know, that, that's why. Die on it. Especially if you're not one of those full time agent ones. You know what I'm saying? Like a full time. You know I'm saying, you just part time, you kind of like got your foot and maybe like in a number of different things. And that's cool too. But for those of us who like, you know what I'm saying? Put their blood, sweat, and tears, and they all in all in us. Man, you know, we see it all. So that's yeah. why I said so continue to, to, to provide what's plentiful, bro, because, man, it's abundance out here for all of us. But and and, and I, I agree with you. And that's that's mainly why I have the Cash Flow Academy, the Notary Cash Flow Academy, because that's what I concentrate on. I concentrate on how the notary can make the most amount of money in the shortest period of time. So that's what makes my my academy much different from everybody else that does what they do out there. Because I can let you know right now, like I go toe to toe with lawyers. Like, you know, really? they're in court negotiating. I'm going like this and I'm like, I'm going to win. Like, so I, I try to teach I already know. the same, the same, like you said, the energy level has to be up there too. Because yes. these, these lawyers, their energy, they some smooth, slick talking pimp ass dudes, man. So they were like, oh, well, you know, with this, uh, whatever, dude. Like, right. this is my fees, or do you want to get this done or not? Right? So right. I, I try to teach people the right way because I really believe the only reason why these title companies and loan companies are lowballing people is because there are too many other notaries accepting these lowballing yes. offers. Yes, because they don't know the game or due to their personal situation, their financial situation. I know all of us got personal situation, but we all got debt at the end of the damn day. We all got, if you were, you are not American, if you don't have any debt is what I said. <laughs> facts, facts. I mean, that's how they set it up. That's you true. got some loan debt, you got some type of medical debt, you got some type of credit card debt, you got some type of relationship debt, spiritual debt or something. You got 
some form of debt or many forms of debts in this country. So, so yeah, like them lawyers are slick talking, those title services are slick talking too. Yeah, but yeah, if you keep, I mean, I'm saying just like Tanisha just said, if we keep, if, if more and more of these notaries keep taking 75, matter of fact, matter of fact, remember, uh, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm telling you this one, uh, Tanisha, and uh, my man out in uh, Oakland, bro, remember when I sent you that screenshot of that certain sign and service company when we first met? Mm -hmm. How much was that refinance? Actually, I tell you, you remember it, it, it was low. No, I know it was forty five dollars, but it was actually revert. It was a reverse mortgage, right? They wanted you said that was a pain in the ass, and then it was for forty five dollars, right? So they right. So they out here, man. Certain sign and service companies out here trying to pay people uh, forty five dollars for a refinance. It's certain sign and service companies out here trying to pay you seventy five dollars. <laughs> For to print out a ream of damn, uh, you know what I'm saying, a ream of a paper for for, yes. for the first mortgage. Yes. And then yeah, sometimes I, I couldn't believe it. When back. you send that to me, I was like, wow, the yeah. game is fucked up, right? Yes. Like we there, we gotta we gotta change. And man, that's dude, why that's, I say, man, is it 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 it'd do us all good as a as a as you being a signing service uh, uh owner. Me being a uh, like I'm saying, like a notary professional, and everybody else on here, and everybody that want to be on here, and even and any title company that's listening or will listen in the future, we don't know. We don't know who will get a uh, hold of this, but I'm just putting it out there. Oh yeah, you know, they listening. It don't make no sense to be on that greedy ass lack of abundance shit. It just don't. It just really don't because at the end of the damn day, we all could be replaceable by these damn computers because you know what I'm saying through online notarization, but really. But I think too, with this industry, it's gonna be hard pressed to kind of make it fully, fully uh, online because uh, by being so much paperwork involved and by being such a, a very archaic, traditional industry, paper mm -hmm. is still, still gonna be a bound, I'm saying bound and forth. Yeah, the, mo the most I see, like, I, I don't really see it going that way for for some years i i do see the hybrids coming in right you know the, yeah because i do a lot of those yes. yeah i can see a lot of the hybrids but as far ones. as um doing a full signing online like that i don't see that no. happening for probably another four or five years to be honest with you well probably well probably well, right, yeah 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 i could I, yeah but i don't want to see that and i said but in the midst of that i don't want to continue seeing like hearing about people taking Seventy-five out of loan client. I mean, uh, uh, signs on average. Yeah, I get it. You know, advice from you know certain uh, uh, um, notary sign agent mentors, whatever. Like in certain courses, whatever they say. You know, take some of the low ball signs just to get your feet wet. Yeah, I get that. But me, if I was to ever have a course or like whatever case may be, I would say, no matter where your confidence at, this, that, and the third, I would say do no more than four or five closings like that. Then after that, you got to decide whether or not you really want to go hard and paint with this, or is this really for you? You know what I'm saying? Because if, if if it is really for you, you're going to be looking to make more than 75 bucks for a goddamn refinance. You definitely going to yeah. money. I'm saying you definitely going to look to make more bucks if you're making 75 dollars for a goddamn reverse mortgage. That's yeah. like that's that's minimum wage, bro. Yeah, okay. that's minimum wage when you think about it in our industry. That's like you know what I'm saying? Like you say, God forbid, like if your, your sign's like about half hour to 40 minutes away coming and going. Then you go. Ain't fair, but uh, but it's cold, baby. It's cold. It's cold. <laughs> it's cold. But at the same time, it could be warmed up. It could be warmed up by, you know what I'm saying, by spreading abundance. It could be warmed up by spreading So Tech said, what is the lowest interest rate you've seen? Uh, good question. The lowest interest rate I've seen for a 30 year mortgage, I saw it maybe about four or five times, bro. Mm -hmm. It was about uh, no lie, no lie. I'm talking about like like, like 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 about four or five times, uh, two point one two five. Wow. Yes, two point one two five on a thirty year mortgage. She saw. Nisha said she saw a one point nine nine. God. I heard about that, but I never <laughs> I never saw it myself. So right now, now, now the lowest I saw on a fifteen year was at a two point oh. Mm. Two point oh. So so. I don't know if those I have heard through Linden Tree, they still have those, but but here's the thing with them. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I just know like on, on the base again, like for those like those 2.0 and lower interest rates. Uh, where it is, where it is on, on, on the real estate mortgage streets, 
you got to pay a lot up front. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's like a, like a lot in closing costs. Oh, you know, or like a lot of front load. Like yeah. a front load, like, you know, like in discount points, like to bring down a, uh, those, gotcha. those rates. Plus, probably pay your taxes and all that stuff up for a year up front mm -hmm. in order to get that. And for some people, if you got the bag like that, if you got the funds, the available funds, I say go for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially if, if it's going to serve you uh, later to, because I'm all about all of us reaching, you know what I'm saying, our financial goals, man. Because like I said, debt is, debt is slavery. That is slavery, man, for real. And and you know, that's why a lot of you know what I'm saying. So so to have like the industry out here, uh, shit, paying you peanuts. You know what I'm saying? You supposed to be eating peanuts, not earning. Yeah, them, yeah you know that's, what I'm saying? that's so crazy. I, 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 ain't, I ain't with that. I am not with that. So I'm not one of those. Uh, so so what made me earn more money in this industry in a short amount of time was, I just told myself, you know what I'm saying, uh, that. I'm worth, I'm worth at the very least $100 per sign, $100, you know what I'm saying, an hour. And I just started slowly but surely not taking $80 signs, not, not taking 85, not taking 90, not taking 95. Like, no, I'm like, I'm, I'm cool. But it was, it was a, it was a process. And you know what I'm saying, like, as I said earlier in our conversation, I feel that we haven't, it's a confident thing, man. So it I, is, it's, I, it's a self-discovery. Right. Not only that, it's a self-discovery. You're absolutely right. But how I looked at it too, you remember the old school game, Super Mario Brothers and all that shit, right? Video games, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, we all come from the video game era. You know what I'm saying? We from the inception of that era. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with Mario, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, hell, the higher I raise my confidence by going through the obstacles, by going through warp zones and fighting different King Koopas and all that shit, I should be able to get, uh, you know what I'm saying, five hours more here, 10 hours more here, 15 hours more here. And you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, so I, I mean, so that's why I say like one of the greatest things I would advise somebody is, is to get ready to level up past your current confidence level. And that means being, becoming, as they say, like, it's like a lot of entrepreneurs, learn to become uh, uncomfortable. Learn to be comfortable, you know what I'm saying? I, matter, matter of fact, Dre teach that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mentor Andre teach that, like learn to be, be comfortable to be to be uncomfortable. Yeah, get learn ready, ready to learn to do that because if not, you're gonna always make those forty to seventy five dollars sign. You look looking back like I'm doing all. You know what I'm saying, and say if you do like 80, 80 of those in a month, you probably gonna be barely cracking four or five racks. Yeah, and that's yeah, a lot of knowledge on your mind and on your car and on your time. You know, I do I do this free webinar once a month. I would start doing Uber. Yeah, I, I do this free webinar once a month. And I always ask people, I'm like, which one do you want to be? Do you want to be Walmart in this notary industry or Target? And what most people you, say. You gotta pick one. Gotta and pick most one. most people, most people will say Target. Right. Because again, right Target, Target is, makes people. more money per transaction versus right. volume. Now, let me ask you this. Now, do they really mean that because it sounds like the ideal thing to say, or do they really feel they are a part of the Target brand and they care about the Target matter? Okay, I'll, I'll say this. When I first started off, majority of people would say Walmart all day. Right. Matter of fact, right. they would say one even worse, which would be Amazon. So that's Ooh. really volume versus price, that's, right? Hey, hey, Amazon is the one that started all this damn disruption shit. Yes. That's one brought on Ubers and Lyft and you know everybody else, you know, Snap Docs industry. They, they, they the ones, they they are the godfathers and the godmothers of the whole disruption industry. Cause they want to start killing off the uh, the book uh the uh, it's like the uh, bookstores and the yeah, it, it it actually started off with uh Home Depot and Walmart. They were the original category killers. Straight yeah. up, yeah, <laughs> because they they did a survey of when Walmart would build, they would literally kill all small businesses within a twenty mile radius radius of right of where they hit right. right. Same thing that would happen with when Home Depot touched down, they would kill twenty you know businesses within a twenty to twenty five mile radius. So a lot of people were thinking like, hey. Okay, now, like a lot of people don't realize that Amazon struggled for years. Like there was many times Amazon was going to go bankrupt 
And Jeff Bezos had to beg the investor to give more money. I'm like, man, just trust me. Just trust me. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And right. he was getting all of this infusion, all of this money infusion coming into the company where he was able to kill a lot of the businesses like Toys R Us. Like there was a partnership between them and Toys R Us. I heard and about Amazon that. snaked their ass, right? I heard about that. I heard Think about of, you, that. you have to look at it this way, man. When you have companies like, like Walgreens and, and Walmart and even Target, right? If you go into the pharmaceutical area and then you see Robitussin, right? And right. then they have a Walmart brand that says equivalent to the Robitussin. That's right, true. That's their little knockoff. That's their like jab to get to close Robitussin down Robitussin out. and take all of their business. This shit is dirty, man. This is a it dirty is. ass business. It, 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 it is, man. And like you write, all industries got their fair share of dirt. And and I say, hey, you know, like in this notary game, I'm saying these notary streets. I mean, I I'm out here and I see it. I see what they be trying to offer. And I see what they trying to expect. You know, what I'm saying expect you to do. And then you know, too, uh, and you know, like they don't want to pay you for like you know, like special requests. You know, what I'm saying like if the signer want to do the signing outside, or you know, they want you, man. I had this once, man. No lie, man. I had this one. I called and um um. I was about to uh, call and confirm this one client. <laughs> this is funny. I was about to call and confirm this one client, man. Um, whatever. I, I forgot what race they was from. I want to say like, I don't know, man, Asia or something like that, whatever. But anyway, that don't even matter. But I'm just giving you like the full, like, you know what I'm saying, like some details of it. Um, they wanted me, man. They were like, okay, yeah, you know, that's the right time. Yeah, you know, that's the right address. But they had like a list of requirements that they wanted for me to comply to if I was gonna do the signing inside, you know what I'm saying, inside their home. And imagine this is still the winter time, so ain't no way in the world we was gonna sit outside in the patio or garage, or you know, I would have broke out, <laughs> well, hey, well, you know what, this is what we gonna do now. I'm gonna hit you with the old, the old please sign here role. And those don't know what I mean by that is uh giving them the uh documents at their doorstep and providing them like all the sign here stickers, and I tell them, hey. But every time you need to sign a date here, pull off those stickers and discard them or give them back to me. I know all sign agents don't do that, but hey, like I said, I'm all about time efficiency and, and I'm all about doing things as a business and smart and what, and what makes sense to me in my time as well as theirs. But anyway, to get back to what I was saying, they wanted me to come in there with a face mask, um, get some hand sanitizer, Right, and they wanted me to do a damn um, uh, 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 body temperature check. They was gonna do all that <laughs> <laughs> straight up, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because they said, you know, and I get where they was coming from. You know, they had like you know, like uh, elderly sick people in their home living with them at the time. I said, yeah, I get it. And then two, and then and then here's the other. You know what I'm saying like this, is like icing on the cake. And dude told me. Now this is the first time a client ever told me this, y'all. He was like, and keep in mind, I'm one of those borrowers or signs that I want to like read through everything. I said, oh, oh bro, we, you know what I'm saying? We got, we got a match made to happen, because check this out. Um, I'm a full-time signing agent, and it's a, you know I'm saying, imagine, this is a Friday, and Fridays, I don't know if those could feel me in the chat room, maybe they can, but Friday, Mondays and Wednesdays is normally like the days is popping for mm. me. And I think that day I had maybe like six appointments. And he wanted, he said, I said, I said, bro, I understand that and I respect that. But keep in mind that you have up to three business days to change your mind and cancel loans so you get more familiar with the documents that way. If you do have any additional questions, reach out to your loan officer so he or she can go through that. Cause I'm not a, I'm not designed to give legal advice. And we none of us really not. So therefore we shouldn't put ourselves in a position to 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 to, to feel like we do need to give them like a more detailed information or deep in debt. Uh, uh, explanation of a particular document. No, that's what the that's what the knows the right to cancel, and that's why these appointments are designed the way they are set up too, to be done in about 40, 45 minutes at the most. But he told me that. I said, well, you know what? I don't really think this is gonna be a ideal match for you and I. I said, one, I got a couple of appointments after you. Two, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to speed up your process, and you know what I'm saying, and make you uncomfortable because. I'm on a tight schedule. 
So I said, man, uh, we might have to just get you, you know what I'm saying, somebody else out here. So, so, so you know, I had thought about it a couple of days. I said, like, should I do it? Uh, should I do it? Long story short, I let the title company know. I mean, because I guess, no, no, actually, he had beat me to it. The title company had, no, the, the, the sign service company had reached out to me and said, hey, the signer said, when you confirm an appointment that, you know, like due to your schedule, blah, 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 blah. But basically everything I just told you to share with you guys, I said, yeah, I said, I said, cause you know, based on him telling me all his COVID-19, you know, precautionary protocol, I get it. And then on top of the fact that he said he's gonna be uh, a reader. And I told him like, hey, I respect that, but you gotta respect the game, the notary game basically. And I told him, hey, I said, I, I said, I wouldn't be an ideal match for this, for this client. And you know, they went up here and resigned it to somebody else. And you know, we still work together, but I just been honest with I'm like, yeah, they ain't, they ain't my thing. Yeah, transparency is key, man. I mean, it is, you know, man. You know, a lot of got time to be fumbling and bumbling around all that right. stuff. You know what I'm saying? Do what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm going to the damn doctor's office on slash, slash giving out, you know what I'm saying? Like a, yeah. uh, a well executed sign. And like I said, transparency, being real with yourself, having confidence. Um, uh, providing extra service, being efficient in what you do, man, how can you not grow? How can you not eat? How can you not, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to be consistent, how can you not do that? So that's why I said, so always put your, I always put myself in position, well, hell, if they don't bite off my, my mineral requirement, somebody else will, you know what I'm saying? As long as I'm treating the gang right, the gang will treat me right, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I really, I really, really believe that, and I think a lot of us as signing agent professionals, we have to uh, learn to adopt not my thing to the letter, but something similar. Because if not, like I said, soon we're gonna be doing shit, we're gonna be doing refinance for $50 on average. Yeah. Who wanna do that? Yeah. I don't yeah. wanna they'll, do that. they'll be doing that. We won't right. be doing that. I'm not, not, <laughs> not notary 300. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I'm not, right. I ain't going, man. So it's like, <laughs> so as much as I said, ain't uh I'm saying agents, uh I'm saying like, like agency owners like yourself. And um, and uh, all those on the call right now, whatever, like who are notaries, inspired notaries, man, level up on your confidence as fast as possible. Be confident enough to say, look, I, I did these little four or five little underpaid assignments. Now it's time for me to, you know, at the same time, you gotta be working on your skills and your presentation too. Cause you know what I'm saying? I'm all about that too. So I ain't never talking about uh, getting getting the most money while you provide the minimum amount of service. No, right. that's right. Over deliver. You know what I'm saying? So so you are so 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 I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about treating the game fair and prosperous so you can get back your abundant return as you're supposed to get. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Well, I hope you guys got tremendous value. We this is you kicked off season two right, brother. You kicked off season right. two right, man. I love it. Thank you guys again for tuning in, man. This was awesome. Um, we're we're gonna add the extended version on this one because this he, he you must have got your second win, bro. You, <laughs> you <laughs> dropping that pin. Hey, bro, I told you, man. Man, you know what? Like I said, oh, let me share this with y'all. You know, man, these past, like, like I said, all this year, okay, like in January, I did 88 closings. And uh, February, I did like about 75, 76. And this past month, I did 84 closings. Mm. So, you know, since the pandemic, as you know, bro, as you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm like, bro, hey, man, what, what, hey, 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 whatever you got for me, hey, say it fast, bro. Hey, I'm like, uh, but I'm on my way to a closing or appointment or I'm on the phone with somebody else. Hey, talk fast. It should count like a goddamn stock market person, whatever the case may be. I, I see how they feel now, or, or like a, a fast talking real, a realtor or whatever. But I say all that to say like today and lately, I, I actually like decided to give myself some time just to work on other things I need to work on in life. In particular, this uh, like starting to uh, build up my uh, my social media presence. Yeah. You know what I'm because I definitely, you know, it's gonna be a point in time where I'm not gonna wanna do as many loan signings Sure. Consistently. You know what I'm saying? So you, you, you got an Instagram? What's yeah, your Instagram? Yeah, my Instagram um is Sears Tower. S-E-E-R-Z-T-O-W-E-R. 
All right, I'm putting it in there now. Yep, she is tough. Yep, yep, Ben, pre appreciate it. So I, I don't have like no notary uh, information, or anything like that. It's pretty much just like my own personal thing. So, so I'm, 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 I'm working on, like I said, building up my online social media presence, slowly but surely. So, uh, but now, man, like, like, like back to what you said about my second win, um, bro, man. Like I said, uh, just, just being at uh, based like a like, like a student of my own philosophy. Like you know, man, sometimes. Man, I don't go to bed. It's like probably about two o'clock in the morning. You know what I'm saying? After doing seven to eight closings, and I get my ass right back up at six thirty, yeah, five thirty, seven, and be at it again. Like, woo, I'm just like, I don't, you know, I'm just like, I, I ain't missed a beat, man. But uh, like I said, man, I, I think it just come from like the the love uh, I get from it, man, and the love that you know what I'm saying. I, I, I just I just love what I do. I like, I really think I was meant to do this at this point in my life, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Even though we all where we at, where we supposed to be at, but I really think I'm supposed to be doing this when I'm doing, man, cause like I said, cause I caught on to it so fast, I figured it out so, and I'm still figuring it out so fast. And I think too, uh, just like you say, willing to invest in myself, willing to invest in one of the earlier students of your coaching mm -hmm. uh, uh, program, and you know, get with Mark Will's program, get with Bill Soroka, Get with other people's programs. What's that, what's that other uh, sister that that you you speak of? Um, uh, 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 Vanessa, Vanessa. Let me see. I'm about to look it up real quick. She out of Virginia. She said Terry. Vanessa Terry, I think. Uh, notary, notary. And then uh, it's another one too out of Texas. Um, uh, her site is Signing Agent Basics. Yeah, yeah, sign agent basic. She got a she got a a YouTube channel. She 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 popping too. She out of uh she out of Texas. I think she got like about I once like about 14, 15 years. Kendra, that's her name, Kendra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and this other guy I was checking out, I, I was a student of too, uh John uh Sedecker, uh notary signing uh agent blueprint. Mm. He now 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 what I liked about him that was so dope, kind of remind me of you, but just Little different, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, he all, you know what I'm saying, he since since day one, he always and he still stresses his day, run, run this shit like a business. You know what I'm saying? You be mm -hmm. in control, you know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying, like you propose things to them, you know what I'm saying? You let them know what's wet far as like how you get down, you know what I'm saying? Now, out of all not, not to say like the other ones don't promote that, you know what I'm saying? Now, now imagine I haven't took Kendra's course, I just watched like a lot of her YouTube stuff. And I got some stuff off of Nessa Terry, but I never took like none of her her uh, her loan side and stuff. But like the other three people, I've actually took. But out of those three, I ain't saying like they don't promote that. But like uh, John, let that shit be known from the jump. Like you know, what I'm saying like this is what you do. You know, what I'm saying this is how you want to run your thing. And everything that I learned from him has definitely has definitely you know what I'm saying paid off. I mean, cause uh. Um, like I like, like I run to a lot of people. I don't know a lot of people know this. Like you know, like for instance, but like when it comes to like like uh, like FedEx uh, supplies and UPS supplies, hmm. you know, like you know, what I'm saying like whether it's getting like the, the uh, air pouches, whether it's like getting like the legal size document folders, whether it's getting like that uh, that uh, polyurethane material, mm -hmm. um, uh, small pack and long pack, like what all the title company sign service expect you to put it back in. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, from him, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm giving away a little bit of stuff. I ain't gonna give you, I'm saying give away too much of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Cause I still believe everybody got it best and I ain't trying to take money out of his. But I said this with y'all since I've already started. Like he showed me the game, like to prevent running out of those supplies, we just ordered the revenue through FedEx and UPS, set up an account. So right. that's again, running your shit like a business, like an entrepreneur. Yeah. And see most of us, we ain't, you know what I'm saying? We ain't, we ain't knowing about that. Right, ordering them online, getting them delivered. You know what I'm saying? Order them directly through FedEx and getting them delivered. And you know, in the beginning, you know what I'm saying? Like depending on how much you're trying to order, they may give you like a little flat, like, well, well, what you gonna do with all these? This, that, and the third. And I, I had to like literally tell like, I'm a notary sign agent, I do this and I do real estate closing and it's, it's real busy right now. So this is the amount I need. Yeah. So uh, it was more FedEx giving me issues as opposed to UPS, but, but, now they pretty much know, like, you know, since they see me order these supplies, you know, every so often. So now they are good. But 
he was like a real good example, like before, you know what I'm saying, you and I uh, end up clicking up through Andre, like, uh, like how to really run it like a business from you calling, marking yourself to title companies, from you hollering at the signing services. He really, he really teaches you like not to settle for shit. See, the, the, the only thing we have to do with you now, Jamar, is get you to set up an agency, man. <laughs> you you man. did the hard work already as far as getting all of these these good clients, man. Now, I, now again, that's the self discovery part, right? Right, 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 right. And I you know, know your ass don't trust no other damn notary to handle that shit. Because you know, because you know, because what it is, man. You know, a, a, a part of being successful in this business, man. You gotta, like I said, you really gotta be. You really gotta want to be in it. You really gotta want to be good at this if not it's gonna look like a whole bunch of paperwork to you like i don't want to do this or let me get out man because like the little shit i be hearing about man like what uh <laughs> what title companies and sign services go through with some of these notaries man you wouldn't believe man you'd be like damn people be trying to like not do that or don't remember to do this or and then i, I guess to me as a shorty i was always like an observant type of dude Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was always an observant type of dude, man. Like I was always like picking up like little, you know what I'm saying, like Ebony magazines and you know, hip hop magazines and shit. And just like literally just like studying that shit. So I guess like I said, once again, it just transferred me over like then I said like, you know what I'm saying? When the opportune time was right, the universe was like, hey, we got this for you. There's no reason, there's no reason long sign agent shit. Since you always was like observing shit. So I always say like this is one of my own personal catchphrases with this industry. I'm a notary, you know what I'm saying? Or we notaries, and we know this shit. You know what I'm saying? You know? <laughs> and on that note, we are signing out, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to Jamar Ra again. Thank you for your time, brother. I really appreciate you dropping hey, a lot of the wisdom and everything with us. Um, be Doubt. sure to watch this show. We have it on Spotify, Apple uh, Podcasts, um, Google Podcasts. It's going to be on YouTube every all all the major platforms hope so hopefully we're able to help other loan signing agents navigate a little bit better build up their confidence hopefully, be able to uh, be more consistent make a little more money so they can feed their friends and family and whoever else that they got in their family so yeah, on that I note ladies and gentlemen peace love and happiness and cash flow to all you guys and you heard and plus man we gotta we gotta make this notary industry fly man we gotta it's up to us oh yeah 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 it's yeah, up yeah. To us to yeah everybody it. had actually stayed on this three hour thing man brush your shoulders off man you guys man, are true man, man. thank sure. you i'm glad i hey 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 no lie i was telling him man i don't even know if i'm gonna have some to really say to like i know how long it's gonna last but mm -hmm. you know hey it, it end up we flow we flow, it, it, we it vibe, up. we flow, we let it do what it do. But yeah, we definitely got to make this notary industry uh, uh, just fly, man, just fly. And, and 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 I'm loving what I'm seeing, like with a lot of uh, our people, man, getting wind of it. And, you know, we just got to just like make it look good, do the right thing and like uh, don't be so money hungry without rendering a high level of service. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Indeed. Shit like that. Cause you know, like a lot of us got like that. We come from like, you know, the smash and grab world, or, you know, a lot of us grew up like in, on the block, whatever the case may be. A lot of us bring that mentality, and that's cool, don't yeah. get me wrong, but it has to be, but it can't be all about that to, to the point where you're cutting corners and services to the point now you're gonna end up asking yourself out the business and, you know, go, you know what I'm saying, just continue to make the game raggedier than what is already, you know what I'm saying, what is current. It's a beautiful thing, but still it's like a lot of raggedy shit going on in, in this yeah. industry. Indeed. Straight up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will talk to you guys soon. You heard? No doubt. No doubt. Peace out, man. Love. Much love.